comic book movies yeah. have made comics cool again. Like yep. all the people that come into the firehouse, you know, they know I'm that guy. They're like, so uh, seen in game the other night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they got their coffee. You know, so I seen in game. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what'd you think? Yeah. What'd you think? Yeah, <laughs> like, I thought it was a cinematic masterpiece. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You know. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Dastardly Dingoes podcast, a show that celebrates all things nerdy. You'll get an insider's look into the world of comic books, graphic novels, TV, and film gaming and pop culture as well as the technologies that drive all of it now are you ready to get nerdy welcome to the dastardly dingoes podcast the show about all things nerdy we discuss nerd news movies tv shows games comics and interview the amazing creators who bring it all to life i'm brian i'm jeremy embrace yourselves because we're about to get nerdy all right folks this week's guest is a a man of many, many talents. Uh, I had the pleasure of getting to know uh, this fine gentleman through his podcast, um, the Blazing Defender Return. <laughs> I've been wanting to do that all my life. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the Blazing Defender Report, if you did not hear me uh, correctly the first time, uh, where he reviews movies, comics, and pop culture. Uh, he has been a bodybuilder, a firefighter for over 20 years, uh, a fitness coach, a podcaster, and now an honorary dingo. Ladies and gentlemen, blazing defenders of all ages, we give you the fantastic, the amazing Travis Jones. What's up, everybody? And thank you for that intro. That was amazing. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> hey, man. So happy to be a dingo. Here. You should That's be because right. it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, and now you are knighted, so everyone has to call you Sir Dingo Travis Jones. I love Sir Dingo. <laughs> Get that tattooed somewhere on your yeah. face, <laughs> like, right here, just like in a teardrop. Yeah, apparently, form. Ooh, on the face neck. tattoos are yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So Travis, it's good to have you on the show, man. How you been? How's this year treating you? Oh man, uh, been been a wild year, right? If anybody yeah, goes, yeah. oh man, a great year, you just want to just come through, oh, right? Drop yeah. kick them in the teeth. Yeah, kick yeah. them right in the mouth. Yeah. Um, uh, it it had it it's it's of course had its ups and downs. Uh, we've been fortunate. Uh, I actually retired from the fire service. Uh, yeah, congratulations. Uh, yeah, hints. Hence the, I, like I said, I'm baby beard on the show today with these two <laughs> we mountain believe that, men, we believe in you. Vikings. You'll, you'll get there, buddy. We have hope. Yeah. Well, I've only been growing it since August, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty it happy It looks right fantastic. Now. Thank I you. I have to say. Yeah. You, you, you use product. Or do you I, I do. just, is oh this God. all natural? No, 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 no. It's pro. It's a lot of product. <laughs> trust me. I mean, it's conditioner. It's oil. It's balls. You have to. You have to. You have to, or you look homeless, right? Exactly. So like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes, that, exactly. that's not good. I mean, right now, everybody's stuck in their homes. It doesn't really matter, but, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, um, my wife, she'll give me that look. She'll go. <laughs> Does she not like the beard? <laughs> it's a funny story. She used to not mind the beard. And uh -oh. then, because I've, I've, I've not been able to have one because we have grooming standards because I, right. I, I wore a face piece, so I couldn't have one. Yeah. Uh, and then I tore my bicep. I was off injured. I let it grow. She liked it. Now she's kind of like, I don't know if I like the beard. <laughs> I'm like, what? What do you mean? She goes, I said, I've had a beard before. You loved it. She goes, I know. I like the way it looks. I just don't like the way it feels. Mm. And I always knew you were going to end up shaving it. Oh. <laughs> she goes, and now I know you're never going to shave again. <laughs> nope. yeah. Hey, she'll get used to it. That's right. Yeah, man. Like I told you, like I told you the other day on Facebook, I never want to see your chin again. Right. Never. I, never I don't want to. to. Yeah. I don't want to. You've it's, seen it plenty of times. Manly chin. It's still yeah, manly of course. Chin, but it just looks much better. Like yeah. you, you guys right here are my my benchmark. That's that's where I want to get to. Well, just call us the soggy bottom boys. We're <laughs> we're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I rem I actually remember uh, my dad, he retired from the fire department to uh Okay. And I remember him going through the same thing like he retired in 94 okay and 
then he started growing his beard and I had never seen him with a beard before. Cause he sure. had to, you know, had to keep it shaved. And it was like a completely different person, you know, like oh, it was yeah, just, it, it weirded me out. My mom said it weirded <laughs> her out as well. So, yeah. um, but we well, got used funny. to it. Yeah. I get so many people like that haven't seen me like in the gym or whatever. Like I seen a guy just the other day. I hadn't seen him in a few months and uh, you know, he, he kind of gave me a weird look and you know, I, I kind of way from a distance, you know, he was working out, I was working out. And then like, we ended up seeing each other again. He goes, Travis. And I went, <laughs> yeah. And he went, I thought that was you. I seen the tattoos and what is this? You know, like <laughs> freaked him out. He's like, no, I like it. I like it. But you know, I just, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, it's like weird when it does to your new, face. Yeah. This is my new cat. You know, <laughs> he comes with me. He likes me. He's a two attached. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, Hey dude, it is great to have you on the show. And before, Thanks. before we get going uh, into our first segment called get to know your dingoes, because like we've said, you are now an honorary dingo. I want everyone who um, watches this show, who doesn't yet have the, the oppor- who hasn't had the opportunity to watch the blazing defender report. I want you to give them the experience of the opening. Like I just did terribly in the intro. I want you to do the real thing real quick, if you don't mind. Don't mind. Don't mind at all. And, and, all right. and I've, as you know, Jeremy may not know, but uh, I recently had to take a hiatus from podcasting because uh, I had some throat issues uh, that I had to have surgically repaired. So it's it's better now than it's ever been, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh yeah. Talking about that on the, um, it was like the uh, Defender Assemble podcast i feel like I, I was listening to your some episodes okay and I, I was trying to remember like when you talked about that and having that surgery yeah yeah it was. It, well yeah it was uh it was like four months ago um you know yeah. and, and I, I, where i did my last one and yeah. what would happen is it was i would be get it would get real uncomfortable for me especially yeah. excessive talking yeah it'd be real uncomfortable for me and uh i actually the last few shows i, I didn't do the opening like I normally do, I cut it real short because <laughs> yeah. it hurt. Yeah, but uh, yeah. no, I'll give you a good one. I'll give you a good one. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Blazing Defender Report. I love it. It's great. It's so awesome. I love it. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> everybody, if you have not yet had the amazing opportunity to watch this man show The Blazing Defender Report, do yourself a favor. And uh, really quick, Travis, we'll do it at the end as well. Tell everybody where they can find you. Yeah, uh, Blazing Defender Report, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Anchor, uh, just about iTunes, anywhere, anywhere you can, uh, you know, find a podcast. Stitcher, uh, I'm on, I'm on all of them, um, and it's Blazing Defender Report. You actually Google it, and I'm, uh, I'm like the third one, third thing down. It's like some okay. weird stuff that pops up first. You know, I would not recommend that on a computer <laughs> without a good antivirus. <laughs> and then, and then uh, you know, Blazing Defender Report. You're hanging with a shady crowd, sir. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I said you're hanging with a shady crowd. Yeah. <laughs> oh, trust me. Yeah. The old, you should see. So it's a live show, uh, which is a lot of fun. And, you know, there, there is an audio version, too. But I really like people to come to the live show. There's one tomorrow at 7 p.m. I'll be talking about comics, TV, and movies, as, as I normally do. <clears throat> and the chat, it, like this, like I always say, the chat is my co-host, my other co-host, because those guys come in and you want to talk about some shady characters, man. But but it's <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. Brian Brian was at the last show. Uh, it was great having Brian chat Nuss. Uh, you know he he jumped in, the and nuts. I love it when they get you guys like in that chat. Yeah. Just your 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 comments. You know you always bring something to the show, and that's what I love. It's more of a community. Yeah. it is just my show. You know what I mean? Yeah. For sure, man. Yeah, I think next season we've kicked around the idea of doing a couple uh, live segments throughout the season just to awesome. kind of yeah. spice it up because that the the comments, getting people in chat, that it's spontaneous and it's fun and it's so it's fun. just yeah, it's it's a great time. I, I yeah. love being in the chat on your shows. Uh, I love being on your show, man. That that's, yeah. you've had me a few times and it's Absolutely. been uh, it's been a blast. Yeah. So hey. Let's jump in to our first okay. segment. Uh, it's called Get to Know Your Dingoes. Um, and we ask the same first two or three questions with everybody. The first question that we have for you is, um, <laughs> what kind of nerd are you? Because there's a lot of different kinds of nerds. Right? There's tech nerds. There's sci-fi. There's fantasy, comic book, movie buffs. What are you? Well, I'm interested to hear this, actually, because 
looking at you, you you don't look like a nerd, right? Right. You look like the guy that probably beat up nerds. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> he beat them up just, and took their comics so and read them. I'm just interested to hear. Like it's a dichotomy, right? Right. Exactly. And it's it's funny because there was an episode. I'm really gonna show my age here of uh, 21 Jump Street. Yes. Uh, Johnny Depp's 21 Jump Street. You guys remember? Oh, you're like, yeah. what are you, like 75? I know, I know, right? I remember back, <laughs> the, uh, back in my day when 21 Jump Street was on the television. <laughs> yeah, Johnny Depp was like seven. Yeah. yeah. No, but like he was a young cat and there was uh, another guy by the name of Richard Greco and he was undercover cop. His job was to protect this nerd who'd witnessed a murder and all this shit. Well, Richard Greco was a nerd himself, but like he was just, you know, gorgeous, had this hair and the body and all that shit. Yeah. And the guy was like, you know, the nerd was like, oh my God, like I didn't realize that you could be both people. Right. And he was like, you can, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And I was like, oh my God, that's fucking awful and awesome. At the same time. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge nerd, man. Like, uh, okay. So I won't go into, I'm not an anime nerd. Mm -hmm. Like I really think that shit's cool, but I know n absolutely nothing yep. about it. Nothing yeah, about about. it. yeah. I mean, like, uh, I do, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the minute work, not the minute work, um, uh, shit escapes me. <laughs> They're going to kill me. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a really good podcast. Um, and, and these guys are really into anime and I, when they have me on, I'm kind of like, I always ask questions because I'm fascinated. Yeah. yeah. But I just know nothing. It's like anime 101 when I'm on the show. Yeah, right. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But uh, I don't get into like that. But like anything, comic books, movies, sci-fi related, man, I'm all about. Yeah. Um, I really like uh, Dungeons and Dragons, even though I'm not like an avid player. I've always wanted to be. Yeah. And of course, our, our, you know, our friends, uh, Dennis Robinson and them from the botched uh, D&D podcast. Dude, like, I, I don't know how they have, like, I don't know how people devote the time yes. to, to Dungeons & Dragons. Like, yes. I, that's the only reason that's keeping me from being, like, a dungeon yes. master. Yeah. I would right. love to do it. I just you don't have time. dungeon master because of your world building. And that's... Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's so like much fun. Everything. You know? For sure, and like, the beard, you know, you know. And Dennis and him are great because... Yeah, and the beard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But Dennis and them are great because they don't get bogged down into like the details. Like, well, what's my perception? Yeah. You know, and he's like, dude, it's dark. You have one eye now from the battle. You're like, you know, you, you, your perception shit. Yeah. What else? Stupid question. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I love that about them because it's like, yeah, right. Who gives a shit? You know, can you see it? Can I see this or not? You know? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but I, that's one of the reasons. And it is a, a, a big, it's big time suck too. Uh, but like when I was on their show, I did some Patreon shows with them and some of their Patreons it was a lot of fun. It's just like, one campaign oh that's put cool. you at a level of like 45 or whatever so you can still yep. do shit not get crushed right uh, and it, it's 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 a lot of fun but i i guess i'm a i and i and what you said i really appreciate it jeremy because like i want to show and, and comics are cool now right like right. comic book movies yeah. have made comics cool again like yep. all the people that come into the firehouse you know they know i'm that guy they're yep. like so, uh, seen in game the other night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got their coffee. Like, so I seen in game, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, what'd you think? Yeah, what'd you think? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, thought it was a cinematic masterpiece. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You know? <laughs> yeah. But then they asked, you know, they're like, "But I had a question. You know, why is it that you know?" And it, it's it's odd because outsider looking in, they have different perception than us. Right. Yep. Yeah. And though sometimes, sometimes it's really stupid, uh, <laughs> which is cool too. It's fine. It's fine. No stupid yeah. questions. It's like, it's like <laughs> but, a baby. You're like, Oh, you're cute. You don't know anything. Yeah. Oh, you don't know why oh, nobody else can lift Thor's hammer. Oh, <laughs> oh. isn't it so sweet and precious, but, yeah. but then they'll come up with a good, like a, something really cool that I hadn't thought of before because of that perspective. And I'm like, yep. Hey, that's interesting. I don't know. You know what yeah. I mean? So I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoy being that guy because it does kind of change the stereotype, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, hey, just because, you know, I lift weights, shoot guns, fight fires, you know, I can like other, I, I love the escape, man. I yeah. always have. I remember my dad, 
you know, before I could read, sitting me on his lap, and he would read classic X Men to me. You know, Chris oh, Claremont, cool. uh, John yeah. Byrne, Wolverine was like, you know, which I'm six or four, and uh, I want to smoke cigars, drink beer, and stab people with knives That's through my right. head. Hey, right. you've arrived. What six year old doesn't? <laughs> right. right, exactly. So maybe not the best role model, Dad, but uh, you know. Okay. Yeah, that's so cool. I guess that's what kind of nerd I am, I guess. All right. Cool. All right. So what would you write? You just comics, movies, comics and movies. Comics yeah, like, and movies yeah. are pretty much my jam. Yeah, yeah. man. I dig All it. Right. That's yeah. where I land as well, for the most part. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm definitely a, a movie guy. Um, and so, like, the this next question that we have for you, it's always, it's like a litmus test, you know? Oh, no. Like, yeah. how you answer this will, you know, determine the rest of your life. So, <laughs> <clears throat> what are your top five movies? Okay. I have, uh, is, so, I have a question about that. When I see yeah. that question, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. How are you going to uh, pick just five? Wish I'd, what'd you say, Jerry? How are you going to pick just five? Yeah, how am I picking? Yeah, yeah. So non-comic related, yeah, it, across any yeah. genre, across okay. anything, your top five of all okay. time. So, yeah. in, in, for the sake of time, I have a list of non-comic book related, okay, and comic book related. Because okay. for me, it cool. would, it'd be it would take me it would take me three hours to decide. That's yep. fair. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, in my top five non-comic related, okay are uh I'll, I'll start with a very obscure one first all right hard boiled by john woo mm. familiar yes I, i've only seen clips seen though i've not seen yeah. the whole thing from beginning okay. to end yeah okay hard-boiled. uh hard boiled it's a it's, it's a japanese film by john woo who basically created the two gun toting yep doves <laughs> flying <laughs> yeah and doves doves like, yeah. everywhere behind you, you know what i mean slow motion action scenes just it was so revolutionary hard-boiled and the killer a lot of john woo's early stuff was just fantastic that american cinema bit on hard yeah. like yeah oh we're stealing that shit right there yeah. <laughs> he, did, he, had, he, di- he directed face off didn't he he directed face yeah. off yeah. Yes. yes yeah um he's he's just this fantastic action director uh but i really 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 like his early stuff um so another one is uh, a a favorite of mine and uh a lot of these are are recent i will say some of these are recent but i'm a big Zack snyder fan which you know me and brian have have, have, you know expressed our Zack snyder love many many we're we're getting into that a little bit later yeah 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 yeah. i'm digging that uh but 300 I love 300. Mm, I thought choice. that, you know, it's man, right up my alley. I was, I was familiar with the battle of Thermopylae anyway. And then they did a movie about it by Frank Miller, who, which did mm-hmm. the graphic novel, who I'm a big fan of. And just the way it was captured and shot and everything was so beautifully amazing. Yeah. I yep. love the dialogue. I mean, I still get pumped up when I see like gifts of Leonidas, you know, like that's right. a smart, you know. Yeah, for sure, man. Now, uh, the thing I love I like most that. about that movie, that's a great choice. Um, uh, and which I love about Snyder to begin with is his movies, all his comic book adaptations, you can take a panel from the comic and see it in the movie. Yeah. Like yes. frame for frame. It yes. is perfect. His DC stuff, especially. Yes. I mean, like, you know, Man of Steel, BBS. I mean, there's so much The Dark Knight Returns. Oh my God! In BVS, yes. we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yeah, yeah we'll get to but it. Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I knew. We you, you say, Jack, you know, Zack Snyder. We start talking about BVS. It's it's a fucking rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hours. Uh, another <laughs> one was just it blew me away. I didn't even know what the hell I was going to go see. It was John Travolta's like comeback movie, and I was like, I like Travolta. Let's go watch it. I don't know what it is. Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Pulp yes. Fiction. Was my introduction to Quentin Tarantino, and uh, actually, I had seen Desperado before that, which was a Robert Rodriguez movie, which I mm-hmm. absolutely loved. It almost made my list. Almost, it was real close. It, it's it really good. I loved it. You know, yeah. Selma Hayek, which was at her hottest. Which, if that's a thing, <laughs> like she's sixty and she's still hot. Um, <laughs> but it was a you know Tarantino script, and but yeah. with Rodriguez doing it. But then I seen Pulp Fiction. It blew me away. Just the I'd never, it was a, uh, you know, genre breaking to me. Like yeah. what do yeah. you call Pulp Fiction? Yep. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of like its own thing. 
so just fantastic. It just blew me away. Yeah, we had we had Andrew Morris on uh, a couple episodes ago, and oh, wow. uh, and he he talked. He had the same almost said exactly the same thing you said about Pulp Fiction. The thing that he said that I thought was a really great way to describe it um, was that there there is no way to describe that movie like other like who like you you know what do you call it but but like he had never he said he had never heard dialogue be used in a movie like that yeah ever and i thought like i'd never thought about that really until he said it i was like you're absolutely right right like the only way to describe it really is it's a tarantino movie exactly Exactly. you know what i like yeah that is its own genre yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. it's correct it's it's the tarantino genre Indeed. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like you can, you, I mean, you don't even have, it could be creditless and you go <laughs> you see know. a Tarantino movie. You're going to go, Oh, who do you think the director was or the screenwriter was? And you're going to go, that's a Tarantino movie. Dumbass. From for the, sure. From the, from the opening fight. credits, every yeah. movie you can every tell movie. it's him. I'm like, it's Oh him. yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, kill bill. Uh, uh, was it fury that he did? Yes. Fury. He didn't do fury. He no. did, uh, uh, inglorious bastards. Inglorious bastards. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, those, I mean, there's, it's his stamp and it's not something that even gets old. It actually kind of gets better yeah. with time. You know what I mean? It's, yep. it's, he's, he's, a, he's a master. He's a master of what he does. Yep. Um, sure. So my next one is, it's, it's a weird one. Again, I feel like a lot of these movies are kind of genre breaking is uh, Force Gump. Oh, okay. It's on my are list. We- it's in yeah, top Jer- five. Jeremy is the yeah. only person that I've met that has Forrest Gump on his top five other than yeah, you. Absolutely. That's yep. awesome. Yep. Yep. It's, I mean, what do you call that? Yep. What do you call that movie? I mean, is it, is it action? Is it drama? Is it a, a rom-com? Is it a, it's everything. It's yep. everything cinema should be. Yep. Like if I had to pick one movie, it may be Forrest Gump because yep. it's got everything. Wow. It's smart. Uh, I mean, just it, it's got twists and turns that you really don't expect from a movie like that. Now, I'll never forget <laughs> this is awful. But uh, the girl I was dating, Kyle, we were in college, and uh, she was like, "Hey, let's go see Four Gum." And I was like, "I'm not gonna go see that movie. Like, uh, I'm like it's, it's gonna be a tearjerker. He's gonna, he's got special, you know, he's got, he's just, he's, he's disabled, and it's just gonna be, it's gonna be. She's probably gonna die at the end. It's just gonna be sad. I don't want to go see it. I went and seen it, and I was just like. Oh my God! Uh, when's it play again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's and go. She was to the like, next what? Show. I'm like, you can go home. I'm gonna go watch it again. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I was blown away. Thought it was fantastic. Yeah. And I will say to this day that Jenny is the biggest supervillain of any movie. Yeah. I agree, dude. She is like an worst. awful human being. Jenny Thanos. You know I mean? <laughs> like, even Thanos is like, bitch, I snap you. Yeah. <laughs> You're out of here <laughs> what you did to Forrest. That was awful. Yeah. It's terrible, sure. man. She dumps him like four times oh my God. and then shows up with his kid and then she dies. And then yeah. she dies. Yeah. And I'm like, what? the ultimate, you know, it's like, Jenny, give yeah. a break. <laughs> Jeez. You know, fantastic movie, man. It's fantastic. It's, it's a great I, movie. Is um, uh, It's just, I love it. It, it gets me pumped up. It, <laughs> and it, it's on TNT or TBS. I watch even the edited versions, which are near not near as good, right? Braveheart. Oh yeah, yeah. I love it, love it. I'm I'm Scottish anyway, and it's mm-hmm. like I know he's Welsh, but yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm like, oh my god, this movie was it was just fantastic. Like, you know, you don't hear many people talk about Braveheart anymore. Well, I yeah. think it's it's. It's very taboo to say that you like a Mel Gibson movie. Yeah, I get that. Yep. I mean, I know. Hey, look, he's insane, right? But so is Tom sure. Cruise. Sure. Yeah. You yeah. know, Tom Doing Cruise it. is freaking nuts, and exactly. and we love his movies. I mean, granted, he didn't say terrible things about specific groups of people, but like, you know, mm-hmm. still, like, if I didn't watch, but movies he's the second because... in command of a massive cult, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And so it's like if I didn't watch movies because of specific <laughs> actors' craziness, I would yeah. never watch a movie again. Yeah, exactly, right. they're all crazy in Hollywood anyway. All yes, of us. They're yeah. nuts. I mean, so I mean, it, yeah. I, I try except to... for except for apparently Kurt Russell. Apparently, according to Craig Ferguson, which he did the Late Late Show for like ten years. Yeah. Oh yeah, said, I love yeah, I love Craig Ferguson. He said, was at a stand-up show one time, and he said uh, that there are only like five actors in Hollywood that he's met that aren't crazy, and Kurt Russell was one of them. 
He huh. said Kurt Russell is one of the most down to earth people, and he he's a pilot. Like he's right. an aviator. That's his passion. Right. And um and he said like he only does movies to pay the bills, and then he flies planes the rest of his time. Well, you know, and you think about this. I mean, you know, you can relate it if if you want to. I would. Uh, him and Goldie Hawn, they're still together. Yes. How many Hollywood marriages stay together? It's true. Not many. Because not they're many nuts. at all. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not. And apparently she's probably pretty down to earth too, or his saneness matches her crazy. Right. Yeah. You know, that's how yeah, it's they, be they, they balance each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all about balance, man. Right. You know yeah. who else is a pilot? Dave Coulier from is Full he? House. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He's uh he does like uh chartered like flights and things like that for people. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Cut That's it awesome. out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we were watching uh celebrity um worst cook in America on the Food Network <laughs> show, right. which is always a lot of fun because yeah. the the people that decide to like go on this are not the people who are famous now. They're not. Yeah. I mean, they're celebrities, but they're not famous now. They like yeah. famous before, so it's always funny to see that. And he was he was on that. Man, and I've heard so many people like the same guy. that show, and you're like, you're probably like the tenth person in a month yeah. that has talked about that show. And I'm like, really? That sounds so itch. Like it sounds like something I would. I've like. never heard of that show. What is it? Yeah, it's on the Food Network, and they Food have Network. two different versions. Uh-huh. One's called Worst Cook in America, where it's just like people that are bad. But then they have Love the celebrity version where these people, you know, well, and especially with celebrities, like they have, you know, essentially infinite money. Yeah. So right. They yeah. don't cook. They, they don't have to cook. Get, yeah. yeah. Right. They go, so none of them know how to cook. It's, how does one cook an egg? We yeah. don't know. Right. Yeah. 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 And so they end up and it's like a boot camp. Like that. Well. Oh, it's okay, not, it's not as intense as boot I was camp, say, but, drill sergeant screaming at them over a stove. That would but, be awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. Gordon Ramsay just screaming at you oh, the whole time. God, they're <laughs> they're divided into they're divided <laughs> into two teams, and like each week somebody's eliminated, like the worst of the worst. If that makes sense, yeah. How do they? Yeah. Who cho- do they have a panel of judges, or is it? By no, the-, the the two the two leaders of the groups. So Anne Burrell is always on it. That's like her show. Okay. And then there's like a cycle of other people. I think because the other people get like so tired of it, you know. Because <laughs> like if you can imagine being like a top chef. Yes. And people not knowing how to hold a knife or <laughs> they're like, I'm getting done. grossed out when they're trying to like cut up a fish or, you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So there's like a cycle of other people, but at the end they kind of vote on who gets, okay. So who's the weakest link. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like it. I it it's that. hilarious. It's hilarious. Do people cry? I like it when people cry. Oh yeah. Yeah. Love at it. the end of yes especially yeah. when people it's get so frustrated they lose it like it's a <laughs> <animal>. <laughs> yeah. what you do know, you mean like, i you lost on the cooking show <laughs> like man i really gotta use the bathroom but this chick's about to melt down i gotta <laughs> see this shit. yeah 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 and they at, at the end i think they get like twenty five thousand dollars so oh, for okay. the celebrities it's not a huge thing they end up well they probably donate donate it. it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Way a lot of them do um but should. yeah it's it's an interesting show. I definitely like yeah. the celebrity one better than the other one, just because it's funny seeing people in like not polished like celebrity mode. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah, they're yeah. they're not makeup. The cameras are they're getting everything, and they don't have the their wind isn't hitting them at just the right moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. And they're they're left kind of vulnerable because they don't know how to cook. So. Right. If they screw something up, it's because of them. Whereas, you know, they can't just like do another take. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's the whole point is to see them struggle. So, yes, it's fun. Yeah. We love to see people struggle. I don't give a shit. <laughs> 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 yes, we love pain. Yes. Let us. We love your misery. Tears. Indeed, yeah. let the tears flow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, you put my comic book top five real quick. Yeah, man, yeah, go quick. for it. Do it. Right, want to hear it? Quick. Uh, first is. It's easy. My first one's extremely easy for me. Winter Soldier is uh, oh yeah, okay. love it, love it, love it, love it. It's, it's honestly it's in the top three Marvel movies. Sure, like it really easily, easily, easily. easily. And, and and the reason is, and all my comic book movies, I, honestly, I feel 
they made this list because they broke the genre, the genre, which is odd because I didn't want to put them in my regular movie list. <laughs> I was like, can I do a non-comic and a comic book list, please? Yeah, but man. then all my comics are genre breaking, <laughs> but I didn't want to put them in it. Uh, it just made it easier for time's yeah. sake. But so Winter Soldier was like an espionage, maturing candidate with Cap. Yes. In Winter Soldier. You know yeah. what I mean? And it was just, I finally, you know, uh, First Avenger was so disappointing for me as a Cap fan. Uh, really? That's surprising. Yeah, it was a good period piece, but you didn't, I just felt like, I felt like I've seen Jack Reacher and James Bond do the same shit that Cap was doing. Gotcha. Yeah. It took till the, almost the scene, it was the scene where he talked to Nick Fury after he'd been woken up, where he was punching the punching bag, and yeah. he hits the bag and the bag goes flying, yeah. and it's like, oh my God. And you're like, there's Captain, Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> That's Cap. He's yeah. the superhuman strength. You didn't really see that in First Avenger. Uh, you've yeah. seen his leadership skills. You've seen his heart and all that. Great. It's fantastic. I wish we'd have had a little more yeah. uh, of, of yeah, the super was, soldier, right? I think it was very much an intro. I mean, it's a, definitely an origin story. So they really dove deep into the mm -hmm. getting to know who mm -hmm. he is, not yeah. so much what he can Why do. Why did Erskine choose him for yes. the serum? Exactly. And you know then Winter I mean? Soldier was... Look what this guy can do. You yes. know what I mean? yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, the opening scene where he's on that the on ship. the ship. Oh, it's so cool. Oh my god! Like, dude, I'm in a movie movie theater, about to lose my shit. You're like, like this is what I wanted. <laughs> you know, a bomb could have hit us, and I'd have been like, that's it. I'm good. It's all good, man. I've done it. I've seen what I needed to see in life. I've arrived. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I love Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier was, you know, it broke a genre. Like, you, you absolutely could do shit with comic movies, right? Yep. Uh, my next one is uh, Logan. Oh, yeah. Rip my heart out. My gosh. Dude, yes. Um, it, it's still to this day so hard for me to watch. Yes. But it's so good. It and, is. And Mangold crushed it with, you know, you gave the most powerful mind in the world dementia. Yep. Like, yep. Oh my God! Who and, the, and he's the one who killed the rest of the X Men because of it. Yes. That's the yes. brilliant part. Dude, it's that movie is brilliant on so many levels. I mean, like, I, I, I just, I, I was blown away by that movie. And yeah. then it's gut wrenching at the end too, right? But uh, in the best way, like, what a in way the best to way. send him off. Send him off, like, yeah. yeah, like how many times, like, you watch a TV show, end of a series finale or something, or a hero of yours dies, and yeah. it, you, you feel that emptiness, you know? Yeah. This was like, I'm crushed. Yeah, but I'm fulfilled at the same time because they did my character justice. Yeah, and Logan yeah. was just that movie for me, man. It was just it was so like good Tony movie. at the end of Endgame. Yeah, like like yes. I was crushed, but at the same time I was like, that's a way to, for him to go. That's, that's yeah. a way that's for him perfect. to go. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. To totally agree. Wolverine's uh, my BBS favorite it, character. Which, which Wolverine. Wolverine? Wolverine's my favorite character. Uh, yeah, you know, all he's time. great, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. And then, like, with having Hugh Jackman playing for so many years and so yeah. many yeah. movies, I mean, yeah. and then, like, yeah. every time there's a rumor, he might come back with Way or, uh, you know, uh, Way Wilson. And oh, Duke gosh. Like, that I want that so bad. Yeah. I want him in that. a Deadpool movie. Good uh, grief. Yeah. yeah. All the and people, I think if anybody could do it, Reynolds can. Oh, yeah. 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 All the people uh, calling for uh, – you, you guys watch the show Letter Kenny at all? Uh -uh. No, no, I, it, I'm surprised Hulu. you don't, Travis. It's right up your alley, man. Yeah. You would it's love hilarious. it. It's hilarious. Yes. What's um, it called? It, Letter Kenny. It's a, it's a town in Canada and it's just right. like, the, I don't, it's so deadpan. Like it's so funny. Yeah. It, it's really funny. I like really? it. And the main character, um, everybody has been saying like, he needs to be the next Wolverine. First of all, really? he's from Canada. Okay. Second of all, his build, like he just looks like he looks like Wolverine. He's got like the the long like mutton, mutton chop. chop like yeah. facial hair that yeah. Uh, every time Do I you see remember him, his name? Uh I can we have can the power. Yep. Yeah, because someone posted uh in one of one of the groups I'm in, one of the many groups I'm in, someone posted a picture of a cat. And I was like, I didn't know who he was. It might be I, him. I like, I like uh, uh, Scott Eastwood personally. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I can see that. When I seen this guy, I was like, but I wouldn't be. That's him. Yeah, that's the guy. Yep, yeah. that's Wolverine. Like, that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, if he can I, look, 
So I to, to to full transparency here on the dingoes, because I'm an honorary dingo. You right. are I not want to come are. on the show and lie about anything. So I will not. I am the worst person when it comes to casting. Like, oh. <laughs> you Jackman? Are you fucking kidding me? He's you were like that with Robert Pattinson, Pattinson too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm. Yeah. Oh, you were uh, salty when they when they. Uh, who, first oh my god. Them. There's been several. Oh my god. There's been so many. Yeah. Uh, were I'll, you like that with Heath Ledger? No, I was actually on Heath Ledger, and I was actually with Ben Affleck. Mm. Oh, I was with Ben Affleck, but I hate. Ooh, I was so mad about Heath Ledger, and then that first trailer came out. I shut right yeah. up. No, I was I was with Heath. Um, yeah. for I didn't. And I don't know why. I think I'd seen a lot of his stuff first night and all that. Yeah, and I was like, man, he's the kid's good. Joker's weird. Like, okay, Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, there you go. I said, yeah. what? Yeah, he's crazy in real life, but that don't mean it's going to transfer over. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, fantastic. You know what I mean? I got no complaint at all. Uh, I, I've just been really, really bad with casting. And, mm -hmm. and if I say, like, Pattinson, that first trailer of Fantastic. the Batman, I was like, when he I just pounds Florida, on man. that guy, I was in Florida and I might have been a tad bit inebriated. <laughs> and I'm on the beach and I, a buddy of mine's like, dude, the Batman trailer dropped because it, it was the DC experience. Yeah. Thing, right? yeah. And I'm like, all right, let's get this fucking over with. <laughs> 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 oh my god yeah i mean i was so happy so Dude. i love being wrong it's fine yeah, yeah that nirvana cover oh my, oh gosh. my gosh that, like, and that just like, got when, me i was so like good. yes yeah when yes. he says when he says i am vengeance i was like yes. there he is that's freaking yep. batman what would he crap beats the dude oh, well, yeah down. yeah but then like i've all see that's the thing with me with batman which is why i have a thing with bale's batman I love the I love the Dark Knight trilogy. Don't get me wrong, I really do. The voice for Batman is everything, everything. And and if you if you don't nail the voice, right. ah, there's always something off. So so I'm gonna ask you two guys this. I want your opinion on this because this uh -huh. is something that comes up with me all the time. Because you know I'm a huge Batman fan. So Kevin Conroy, like, all right, yeah. I get it. He is like when I read comic books, like just voice. read three Jokers today. Kevin Conroy is the voice that I, I have in my head. He always yep. will be. Yep. Does it mean he's the best Batman? It no. means he's the best live act or a uh, voice acting Batman there is. Yes. So, like, when people do who's the best Batman and people say Kevin Conroy, Kevin Conroy, I'm like, no, he's fucking not. He's a cartoon <laughs> voice. <laughs> you would never cast Kevin Conroy in a movie. But they so did. No, that's not what they're talking about. They did cast Kevin Conroy as Batman. As and it was Batman, awesome. And it was awesome. So <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. The Arrow crossover. Yeah, man. As yes. Kingdom Kingdom Come Bruce Wayne. Yes. It was oh awesome. man. No, I'm with you, dude. Like, don't get yeah, me wrong. Dude. Batman the Animated Series changed my life. It did, yes. and I like, and it Incredible. legit did. I'm not even exaggerating or joking. Um, and Kevin Conroy, it will always be his voice that I hear when I read comics. But when you say who played Batman the best, Kevin Conroy did brilliant things with the voice, with, the, with you know, lo, uh, lo, like just, you know, making the register higher for Bruce Wayne, Election. lowering yeah. it. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. Great job. But but you when you look at like, it's a different category. You can't include the voice actors can't. with the live action actors. You can't. And so that's why I, I've never been able to say Conroy is the ultimate Batman because... Mm. He's you've never seen him actually play Batman. You hear him and he does a fantastic job. And that's the reason you don't like Bale, right? I'm it's calling I'm right. calling BS on you, Brian, because oh, oh. you would say that the best Joker is Mark Hamill. So let me tell you this. I did you say have that. said that. Yes, I have. No, I have said that. And I have recently retracted that because of this very argument. Yeah. Because I caught myself, I realized I was like, you know what? I'm being, I'm not being consistent here. So right. you're right. The best Joker is Heath Ledger. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Absolutely, that's the, that's the best down. Joker. Yeah. Hands down. So no, yeah. So you're right. You're right. This is why you're. That's why you're my dingo. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You gotta have a cat like that, man. Yeah, man. You gotta yeah. have a guy like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What's that transitions into my next pick, which is the Dark Knight Returns.
because so of Ledger's brilliant. portrayal as the Joker. Yeah. Yep. It was avant garde. It was something, even as good as Joaquin Phoenix's was, it just, there was, you know, this is the thing with me. And people ask me this all the time. They're like, uh, ask me this all the time, maybe five times in my entire life. So it's all the time. <laughs> all um, the time. They say, well, what, why was Ledger? Why, why not Joaquin? Why not? And I was like, okay. So if you like Joaquin's portrayal, the Joker, then he's your joke. And then he's your, your, your best actor in that, yeah. in that role. I feel like joke. The Joker is Batman's arch nemesis. Batman is the smartest guy in any room. The motherfucker yeah. could be in a Nobel prize nominated, you know, uh, group. He's the smartest dude in that room. Yeah. So to be his arch nemesis, you have to be equal intellectually. Yeah. I didn't get that from I got zany, crazy, unpredictable with Joaquin's Joker, which is great. It's fine. It's a great portrayal of, of what he was supposed to do. But not yeah. necessarily right. a mastermind, is what you're saying. Yeah. Like Ledger's was yeah. correct. See, I would Ledger's say I would say you're no. right, but I would say that Joaquin Phoenix isn't a mastermind yet and that's why that's because you see that like at the end when he transitions into the joker right i'm like this is the origin story of heath ledger's joker there's like i can see that connecting and that's 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 a great a great argument uh going forward like you know right this is but not in this movie yeah well let's let's not do a one and done you know what i would love to see and we're going down a rabbit hole which you've had me on your show that's fine man yeah that's how we do it it's your fault uh i would love to see his version uh the director um Uh, todd phillips oh yeah todd okay Todd phillips I would love to see a Todd Phillips Batman movie. Yeah. Where it's the psychological version of Batman. Cause Ooh. that's something that doesn't get portrayed a lot is Batman. You know, like people, Hey, always be Batman. If you can be somebody, be Batman. No, no, don't ever be Batman. Batman be is Batman. a screwed up, massively messed up individual. Yeah, I yeah. would love to see Todd Phillips, which he can hit. That's his jam. Apparently, is diving into that psyche of that type of character. Like, okay, Batman's going to fight crime, but whatever is, what are his motivations? What is he driven by? Yeah, uh, and it's the death of his parents. This tra- this trauma that has inflict, you know that is that has buried this child to drive him to to to, to wear a bat costume yeah. and become the master yeah. of everything to to be able to thwart uh evil yeah. so like i want to see what goes on in that guy's head and i think that would be a like that would like okay it's not a sequel to the joker right. but it could be you know what i'm saying like yeah. we're in that elsewhere's yeah. universe type of deal yeah you know i think i think we'll probably get a little taste of that if not more than that for from uh that matt matt reeves batman um, uh, yeah yeah i, I really do and I honestly agree. i i know i'm wrong i know i'm wrong but <laughs> i'm gonna say it anyway like i really hope that at the end of this batman movie Joaquin Phoenix's Joker shows up. Oh, and then you like, you've like essentially introduced this world because from the trailer, it looks very similar to Todd Phillips Joker's world. And it looks like the same tone, the same gritty, gross city, um, everything. So if they did something like that, what a way to introduce a Batman, a new Batman franchise by going with the enemy first. Yep. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be that brilliant. would be that would be really really. You want to talk about walking out with your jaw dropped, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be incredible. And you know, it's really hard for me to believe. You know, I know that uh, you know uh, Sony has said that this is it. You know that like this is a one and done. You know, there's no there's no plans to go with a sequel or to oh, well, revisit this yeah. universe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a yeah. million dollar movie. Yeah, I don't believe that. There's no way. Yeah. yeah, there's no way you leave that franchise sitting there. You know, every know. time, every time I picture Todd Phillips, though, all I can think about is his role in the movie Old School. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no. So, like when when the main character comes home and his wife has got like the people locked in the closet, 
and they open it. Todd Phillips is the guy <laughs> that was locked in the closet. I did not know. Go that. watch yeah, the yeah, movie yeah. again, yeah. man. It's so yes, You're he's like, right there. It's so yeah. funny. Yeah. Oh my god! You're my boy, Blue. <laughs> <laughs> What's Todd Phillips' connection to the movie? I think he's friends with Will Ferrell or yeah, somebody. He, yeah. Did he produce it? Uh, maybe. I'll, I'll look on the internet. We have the power. Because yeah. he didn't direct it. No, he didn't uh, direct it, I don't think. Wow. That's, yeah. inter- what a, that's a nice trivia nugget there, man. Right. Good with Jeremy. Jeremy's wow. full of many things. things. Ain't you? All right. Let's see. He, he, is, like he like, He's the director. He's in his beard and goes, hey, did you Oh, yeah. Phillips yeah. is in the fucking closet. <laughs> oh, Todd not Phillips is the director of Old School. <gasps> Did he really? I didn't yeah, yeah. know that. Yeah. I just, oh, I just wow. found on IMDb. Yeah. Well, well dudes, dudes come a long way. I mean, yeah. that, that was a great <laughs> old movie school. in and of itself. <laughs> Joker. But, like, yeah. That's wild. Damn, man. Wow. That dude's got some chops, don't he? Like, he can do whatever. Talk about, talk about range. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, it's a classic comedy and he makes a classic you know drama i mean yeah. wow get it todd phillips dude <laughs> that's awesome yeah. all right man what's your what's your what's your next comic book movie uh next or, or, i'll give you the next two really really quick uh because one we're going to discuss a little bit later is yes. uh it's bbs extended cut another zach snyder to me it's classic Indeed. Classic Batman, classic Superman. It's uh, it, we could go on for days about. We probably like, will later. <laughs> the, the 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 imagery, the like we were talking about earlier, the scene shot for that movie taken straight out of the, the Dark Knight Returns comic book. Yep. Uh, even the portrayal of Superman, like that shot in the Day of the Dead, uh, where they're touch. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. I get chills. Like it's so perfect because that's that during movie. the monologue sequence when they're talking about him being a god and and, yes. and all that oh, stuff yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. just perfect perfect yeah, it's symbolism. perfect it's perfect and that's what i said if there was a man in today's age 2020 flying around saving people oh my god like right. yeah the church of superman the church of yeah. kal would be everywhere and everybody yeah. be going to it yeah so it was a great, you know, it was it, a great study about that Oh, sure. yeah. oh, I'm, yeah. there should be i mean yeah. like dude i would well that's what i'm saying the movie was that, that shit. yeah the movie was a study of what would happen if this actually legit, what would people do that's great yeah well you know there's college courses that that talk about the dichotomy like the the uh what was it oh my god a buddy of mine sent it to me was it the university of wisconsin which surprised me uh no it was utah it was in Utah because I'm like, wow, in Utah, like, you know, the home of the Mormons, they're, yeah. they're talking about this. But it was a college course about the um, – that they specifically studied that movie and Man of Steel and about, like, if Christ rose today, what how would society like? would react. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, can I, can I take that shit online? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I finally get an A, man. Right. I finally get an A in something. Right. Yeah. Uh, or at least his, enjoy doing the homework, right? Yeah, Travis yeah. would write his dissertation on that. Yes. Right? Yeah. I write a thesis on any one class. Got to write <laughs> Um, but yeah, so BBS and uh Infinity War. Oh, yeah. Infinity War is a movie. Absolutely one, you know, people say, "What's if you were on a desert island and you could have one movie?" What would it be? First movie that pops in my head is Infinity War. Wow. Opening scene. If you gave me 20,000 movies of Thor and Rocket and Groot just going around the fucking universe, getting into adventures. Yeah. I would watch every movie. Yeah. Like that. I loved Cap, Black Order. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... It was peanut butter and jelly. It was chocolate. It was <laughs> bourbon. It was cigars. It was everything that I love in one movie. It's like my guilty pleasure. I know a lot of people liked Infinity War. I don't know if you liked it as much as I did. Yeah. Uh, but it was just fantastic to me. Like yeah. every scene 
that every character had was meaningful. And to have that many characters and to be able to juggle that, the Russo right. brothers are amazing. Which, oh, they're great. Know, on here twice, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're just, I mean, they, they're fans, they give you fan service mm-hmm. yeah. and they can still appeal to the, the, the non comic book. Yeah. Fan, which yeah. is, which is a, a gift. Yeah. You know yeah. I, mean? I, mean, I, I do the same. I do a similar thing with, uh, infinity war and Endgame that I do with the Lord of the Rings movies. Okay. I can't really pick one or the other one. I mm-hmm. have to just put them together because they're one continuous story. They are. And it's hard for me to do that. Like with Lord of the Rings, which Lord of the Rings movie is your favorite? I, I can't pick because sure. like it's all the same story in, right. in you know in one one chunk. So yeah, picking, I have a similar I have picking, a similar feeling sorry. about that. You go ahead. <laughs> I, I'm done. I'm sorry. <laughs> picking <laughs> <You're> very excited. <laughs> picking Infinity War is like picking the first Lord of the Rings movie. To me, like Gandalf's dead. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, right. yeah, it, it's such a down, down note. Like how it ends, you're like, sure, you know, it's just Sam and uh, Sam and Frodo, Frodo like, right, floating off. Like, uh, right, right. what's gonna happen? Yeah, right. but but at the same time, with Infinity War, I totally understand where you're coming from because, like, you had so the thing I was most impressed with, which you touched on was how many characters are in infinity war versus in game because in game, they don't come in until the end. Right. Ha- most, most of them are all dead. And right. so in infinity war, you have screen time for every Everybody. single Marvel hero right. that has been on a movie so far. Right. Yep. Um, and they do it brilliantly. It's like bril- nobody, it's brilliant. yeah, nobody, see, like nobody gets, you know, shorthanded and, and, no. and it's, it's great. And it's like and, everybody gets their scene, even like, you yeah. know, Cap shows up and, you know, he catches Proxima's, you know, spear. Yeah. And, you know, he's got the beard and he just fucking looks badass. And then, you know, and then uh, you get with Wanda and Vision and they had this fight with Proxima and Corvus. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, like, this is awesome. And now, oh, we're going to go to the Nevertheless and we're going to get a new fucking hammer and Rocket's going to take Thor. And then you get this Peter Quill Thor thing, which, oh, my God. I can't wait for that to continue. Oh, my God. <laughs> if it's not our, as Guardians of the Galaxy, I don't know. I'm going to lose my mind. Uh, I just, I can just picture, like, like <laughs> just, like, the traditional Guardians of the Galaxy font that they've had. And then, yes. like, the like the rough, like, red, AS. Red marker. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that Guardians would, out to the side. Yeah, that would be yeah, great. I mean, yeah, Pratt and Helmsworth. I mean, just, oh, my God, dude. They're amazing together. The, I mean, that chemistry was fantastic. Him it's and Rocket just, you were know, great the Death of Black too. Widow. What'd you oh. say? I'm sorry. I, I just said his, uh, him and uh, Thor and Rockets. Uh, oh, chemistry was was great too. Was He's just Andy Dwyer. That's that's the thing. Like that's <laughs> yes, what I love yes. so much about. It. It's just right. it's Andy Dwyer in a spaceship. That's yeah. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just it, I don't know. It, it, there was so much good in that movie, and then you gave me a character, a villain, no less, that nobody knew shit about, and I yeah. was so worried about this movie. I was like, man. People aren't going to get down with Thanos. They don't know who the fuck he is. Marvel doesn't do villains very well. No, they don't. Miss. Knocked it out of the park. Thanos is one of my favorite movie villains of all time because of Infinity War. I mean, like, he was relatable. And there's still a great argument that Thanos wasn't wrong. (laughs) I mean... Life is what screws everything up. You know what yeah. I mean? Joe Rogan's got a great, a great bit about aliens coming to Earth for the first time. And they fly through my, Wyoming. Oh, man, look at this. Oh, this is gorgeous. They thought through Montana. Oh, man, look at this. It's gorgeous. Blah, blah, blah. Go over Hawaii. Oh, my God. Look at these colors. It's so beautiful. And then you fly over L.A. And you're like, what the fuck is well, First of all, that? they wouldn't be able to see anything yeah. in the city yeah. because of the smog. It's like, yeah. oh, my yeah. God, if we're eradicating shit, that L.A.'s got to go. Yeah. Like, this place is gorgeous. We got to get rid of that shit. <laughs> so, you know, I think, I think Thanos was kind of right still. Uh, but he had a reason. He wasn't just this maniacal. And that's, I interviewed Jim Starlin, which was the creator of Thanos at yeah. uh, LouisvilleCon 
uh, Galaxy Con, and uh, I kind of told him, you know, not so many words, and her, his handler, which is a chick that I met at a bar, that's how I got that interview, uh, she was like, wow, you may be the only guy that's ever interviewed him that said you liked, you know, Russo Thanos over his. And I'm like, oh, I did. Thanos was always one of my favorite villains, but the Russos, like, they elevated him. Yeah. Like, yeah. yo, know, Starlin's Thanos was a nihilist. He mm -hmm. worshipped death. Yeah. He wanted to kill people to kill people. He didn't really have a reason. He did it all for love. He did it for love. He did it to, to, to win death's favor. Thanos was doing it to save the galaxy, save yeah. the universe. Yeah. And that's a, you know, it's more relatable. He's like, hey, the strongest wills make the strongest decisions. Yeah. Like, you don't have the will to make the decision I do. I know what's best for you. And I, I love it. I love the dichotomy. I just, I love, I love, I just, man, Infinity Wars. Yeah. I, 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 jelly, man. I, really. I think, I really do believe, like, there really hasn't been, well, I mean, pretty much now when we've had, the, we've said this before on the show. Um, every Marvel movie is now an event that rocks pop culture. I mean, and, and yeah. but I would say Thanos is probably the, um, the one villain in movie history that literally sparked moral debates sure. yeah. um, about whether or not he was right. And no matter what you think about whether or not he was right, you pretty much have to agree that, that's a brilliant character yeah. like because no no character has really done that in nope. a long time at least nope. and so the the direction they took especially for a marvel villain like you said marvel yeah. sucks at and making villains because they just never flesh them out you don't Nick care about right. their story they're just there to be the bad guy right. but what they did with thanos was brilliant because brilliant. at the end of that movie you're like I mean, I know that's wrong, but I totally get it. You know yeah, what I mean? And it's like, it. yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh it's no! Relatable. And now you gotta, now you actually have to wrestle with this idea that that on one side of you knows it's wrong, but the other side's like, but is it though? And, and it, so, you know, and that's just brilliant. That's brilliant it's storytelling delivery too, especially when he's arguing with Strange, and Strange is like with genocide. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's when he says, you know, the toughest decisions come from the toughest wills. Like, yeah, and yeah. he's like, well, I think you'll find our will. You know, like, and he's yeah, yeah, his yeah. hand shit. Which is a dope scene. But it's like, yeah, but you still kind of lost an argument, strange. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I, I get it. Uh, he's talking about killing people. And there was a great, great, there was an awesome novel. And I remember when I reviewed it on my show, and I, I tried to tell everybody to read it. The, the the name of it escapes me, but it is a Marvel Universe extension. That's what the novel is called. Mm -hmm. And it's basically the story before actually Thanos, it's actually how Thanos realizes there are infinity stones. Oh, interesting. Okay. And he okay. ends up encountering a guy that has the mind stone, and he actually gets under the mind stone control. Uh, huh. but it's it's a fantastic novel. It's one of the guys that wrote the script to Infinity War. Uh, there are some differences, and what what was odd, what was funny, and I caught it, and I actually talked about it on my show, and it still may come to light. But this person, this this creature that had the mind stone that Thanos ends up finding, he says, I keep it hidden because. There are people out there that so Thanos was like, why are they like, why are they hidden? They're the most powerful things in the universe. And he's like, because there are people out there, there are elements out there that fear them. Hmm. So these elements out there, maybe the Eternals, you yeah. know, which we're gonna see soon on Disney Plus, uh, they knew about these stones and they hit them. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, it could be the Celestials, which we see. That's uh, what came to my mind. Yeah, it could yeah. be the Celestials. Yeah. Like, hey, we don't. No one needs to get all these stones. It'd be bad for us. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because now we hold all the cards. We won't if everybody has the stones. So you know, it, and that hasn't come to pass yet. But it was it's still a great novel, and it really showed like Thanos's progression mm -hmm. and how like he got outed out on Titan. You know, he wanted, you know, he brought it to his father, who was, who was a, uh, 
one of the world leaders there. He was a, a creative scientist, he well respected. And he was like, I've done the numbers, dad. Titan is going to fall in this many years if we don't get rid of people. Yeah. yeah. And because Thanos was purple, he was an outcast mm -hmm. because of his color, was the deviant gene. They all looked at him like he was something wrong with him. Uh, he ended up falling in love. Yeah, man. Great right. fucking story. All huh. right. I'll find it and I'll send I'll send you the link to it, bro. Yeah, dude, it really escapes me. It's yeah, around here somewhere. I'd uh, love to read it. it. Yeah, it's so good. I, I recommend it to everybody that like really enjoyed Thanos in those movies, but and it showed where he came from, which yeah. you know, you don't get in the movies. Books are always better, right? Books are always better. I think so. Uh, Jeremy doesn't because he I don't. I, I, I'm sorry to derail you, but uh, you know, <laughs> no, you're fucking. You no, know it that, is, man. You get dude, talking about this shit. That's what this show is, man. Like no. that. That's we love just bringing people on and, and talking it. until it's you know until there's no more to say. Love um, it. but now we're gonna switch gears a little bit and uh, we're gonna get to know you a little bit mm -hmm. better, my friend. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I've not heard this before so i'm very interested to hear your answer um I, i'd love for you to just tell us your story like uh in all the things you've done because you've done quite a bit because in, in your 75 years that you've been on this <laughs> earth uh, <laughs> been on this ground a long time boy <laughs> um so in in everything that you've done what brought you to podcasting like take us back to, to tiny Trav, if he ever existed. Um, and, uh, and, and I, in my mind, you came out with like 700 muscles coming out of your arms, <laughs> but, uh, like take us back. Like what brought you to doing the blazing, uh, defender report? Well, I kind of alluded to it earlier, actually. Uh, you know, I'd always been a huge fan of the format, the, the, mm -hmm. the platform. Uh, I was a big Rogan fan, you know, just, um, you know, grabbing a microphone, saying whatever the fuck I wanted to say. Uh, there was some networks, uh, which, you know, I think you know this, Brian, I think we talked about before, some networks mm -hmm. that pursued me. And, uh, well, you know, can you, can you tone it down a little bit? No, I'm not going to tone it down. And, you know, since you've asked me, I'm probably going to turn it up because it's the three-year-old in me. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I'm, I'm sorry. Do what I want. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah the 75-year-old in me that I don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> Uh, right, so you know, so it, it, uh, the podcasting uh, platform always was I always drawn to it. So anyway, um, I had a I had an injury. I tore my bicep, and uh, you know, being on the fire department, you know, we my my department doesn't have any light duty. So you know, I had, it was surgically repaired. Uh, they put mm -hmm. a bolt in it. I was out of commission for six seven months. They wouldn't let me go back to work. Um, so in that time, I was like, holy shit, yeah. I, need, I need to find something to what do. What do I do? <laughs> what do I do? What do I do with all this time? So, uh, at first I wanted to start a, and I still want to do this, uh, a firefighter, uh, firefighting centric podcast oh, yeah. with, a, a, with a good friend of mine, uh, a guy that I was working, working down at engine six, which is one of the busiest companies in Louisville. Uh, I was there 14 years. And uh, he and I were, we came in drill school together. We're, we're best friends. You know, we're still best friends. And uh, he's a big podcasting guy too. He's super intelligent. I'm like, man, we'd be fucking great. You know, blah, blah, blah. So we, we sat down and we were going to start a show, right? And we started like, I was like, all right, we need to have a, you know, what's our target audience? What's our theme going to be like? What are we going to talk about? You know, so as we started fleshing it out, uh, we're like, holy shit. We can't talk about this. <laughs> you know, we'll get, they'll, they'll be in our ass. They'll transfer us. So, you know, we'll fire us, you know. So uh, that got put on the back burner. Then I hurt myself. And uh, I was like, well, what am I passionate about? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, what, you know, and that's kind of the way I am. If I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 100 miles an hour, I'm nothing. And I'm, I'm nothing on a lot of stuff. So I've got a lot of energy when I do go 100 <laughs> miles an hour. And it was like, uh, man, I love comic books. I always had, you know, uh, when I was in college, kind of got away from them a little bit. When I came back and uh, a buddy introduced me to the Dark Knight Returns, rekindled my love for comic books. Hmm. And uh, I've been doing it ever since. So and, right there. So you said like when you were a kid, like your dad would read you yeah. classic X-Men and all yes. that. So at what point did you kind of get away from comics and, and then 
uh, and and you know, was it just was it just the coming of age type stuff? You just got it's out of right, it. I, I, I can answer that in one word, Brian. I think I know what that word is. Girls, there it is. Yeah, <laughs> girls. Man, I started liking girls, and I needed money to take girls to movies, and I needed money to take girls out, and I needed money. So what I did was, is all these comic books I had, I took them and I sold them. Oh. Totally screwed over. Oh, you oh, hurt my so soul dude. just now. I spent 20 years buying back. I yeah. like I'd pull it out of the box and go, motherfucker, I sold you this. Yeah. I'm paying 10 <laughs> times what I sold it. This is mine. <laughs> this was mine. It's got my name in it. So yeah. <laughs> it's in crayon, but it doesn't. Oh make it. man. So anyway. Uh, yeah, so I kind of got out of, especially, you know, when I went to college and stuff, you know, I played sports. There just wasn't a lot of time between school and sports to just do a lot of shit. Yeah. So when I came back, a buddy of mine was like, Hey man, he's a buddy of mine from high school. New York's in second grade. He goes, Hey man, uh, you still read comics? I'm like, nah, man, I kind of got away from him. He goes, man, I got a book for you to read though. Yeah. Like, what you got? He goes, Dark Knight Returns. You're going to fucking love it. It's about an old Batman. And I went, an old <laughs> Batman? Well, that sounds fucking terrible. <laughs> Changed my life, man. I still had the copy that I bought dude, in this room over here. I give it to people. I'm like, I only ask you to bring it, to give it back to me. Because like, yeah. it's, it's got sentimental value to me. Want you to read it. I love for you to read it. Tell me what you think. But you gotta get you gotta bring it back. And dude, this thing is a mess. Like all my comics are in plat like Sunday. I spent an hour and a half putting all my comics in plastic and cardboard. That's yeah, uh, that's my Sunday. I watch football, I put my comics in plastic in boxes, comment like variant covers. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah. And I still have that comic. It's fucking the covers barely hanging on it and shit. But anyway. So all the pot back to your back to your original question, rabbit hole, trash yeah. rabbit hole. <laughs> um, it it's I was listening to a bunch of comic book podcasts, right? Trying to, trying to. Yeah. And they were terrible. <laughs> all of them were terrible. They were talking about comics that I was reading, and like they were the fucking next watchman. And I'm like, oh, you're fuck, this is bad. You're lying. Like, yeah. this is false news. this is fake news right this is not right uh so i thought you know what i'm gonna do an unbiased comic book podcast i buy yeah. comic books every week i worry i read comics every week uh i'll just let people know what i like you didn't yeah. gotta like it uh if you don't like it that's great yeah. uh my main goal my 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 objective my mission statement i guess so to speak was to uh you know everything's going digital everything's going you know, the way that way. And, uh, I love having the comic book in my hand. I yeah. love the smell of old comics. The mildew. There's nothing like it, man. Nothing like it. Man. Yeah. You, but like when I crack open some old shit and I open it and I'm like, it's weird. Like, it's like really, really weird. It's true. Uh, you know, yeah. It's it, it, like, uh, you know, superstar. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no there like, is though. There's some kind of, there is a, there's a smell to yeah. old comics. You, oh, you, yeah. you look back at the back, you know, back issues and you take yes. them home, the 50 cent rack, all that stuff. Yes. And you, just, you smell oh, them. And if you're, and if you're weird, like our previous guest, Brian K. Morris, you also lick the spines. He gets wow. into He gets That's intimate. Weird. It's a thing. <laughs> I've, I, I've seen it. I've seen it happen on Facebook Live on his show. He'll just every now and then he'll just mm, and it's I'm like, oh, I'm uncomfortable, but it's funny. That so that's that's weird. I am um, yeah, it's great. I love it's that man. Awesome <laughs> and totally weird to say yeah. that. <laughs> it's great. And he that's the thing, he knows it, and that's why he does it. Because he's yep. that kind of guy. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> I would not lick the spine of my books because I don't want them to get wet. Because it's yes. the value of them. Because I'm a right. collector too. I am yeah. a collector yeah. also. Uh, but that, and that's the reason I got into podcasting and it was at first, you know, I was the nerdgasm hour, yeah. uh, which, uh, uh Frederick Debo, who was the, the great superhero debates too, which is a great fantastic guy. Facebook page. Yeah. yeah that guy's fucking fantastic. He's the best hype man ever. I love people <laughs> posted a old nerdgasm hour, uh, podcast of mine. And it's like, Oh my, I mean, I had an iPhone and yeah. it made people talk about like, 
bare, I wasn't even on audio at that time. Like, you know, like what I mean, like iTunes and shit. I wasn't even on yeah, yeah. that. Uh, you know, so my shows came a long way, man. Uh, but that's how I got into it was it's just, you know, I'm, I, I love it. And um, I, I wanted to share that enthusiasm and maybe get somebody into a comic shop. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 you know, because they can be intimidating. And I've been in some where people were like, are you lost, here, sir? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. There's no yeah. protein drinks here, bro. Right. The gym, the gym is down the street, sir. <laughs> there's no yeah. protein you know, drinks. Like, there's no, yeah. We don't sell creatine here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, dude. I'm looking for Batman 101, fucker. Oh, you know? man. So, you know, so I, I I know how intimidating it can be. And uh, so I just wanted to, you know, like, hey man, look, oh. Hey man, I want to try comic books for the first time. Well, what do you like? Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you fucked. Because yeah. there's like forty thousand Spider Man titles. Yeah. Yes. But here are some that you'll find this week. And go to your comic shop. Go to the new new. Ask them where the new comic book wall is. If they don't try to help you, then you can. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I try to help people navigate a comic yeah. book shop. Uh, I go to great shops. So a lot of the ones in Louisville are great, um, and, but it's it it I, I do feel like Louisville is kind of a uh, an oddball in that way because it's my very rare. across the country. They're like, dude, our comic book shops closing up left and right, you know. And this was yeah. before COVID. Oh yeah, it, yeah. So we have I'm, we have seven. Yes, we have dude, seven stores. Yes, yes, in this city, yeah. like even in Indiana, there's quite a few. Yes, it's so crazy. It, 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 it is weird that you know, uh, up north and even west, a lot of shops are closing down. Um, yeah. so and I, I don't want to see that, man, because that, that's a fun part of my childhood. Like when I did something good in school, that's what my dad did to me. He's like, oh, You want to go to Great Escape? Yeah, which is our comic shop in, in the Highlands, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, yeah. You know, and I would get like 10 bucks and buy like 20 comics and just be. Well, back in those days, though, weren't comics just a penny back yeah. in the 40s, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> there wasn't any color. No, it was all black and white. Color. color color wasn't introduced yet. <laughs> yeah, you're right, man. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I stepped in that one. That was, yeah. that was that's what I'm here for, buddy. I'm that's here. Right, I'm, I'm here you for you. It. It. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I love the pod. I love the podcast, man. And uh, being out for a while was good for me, actually. Um, and I, I and then like before when I did my show the other night, you know, I called it season two, episode one. Uh, it's live on Twitch and on Anchor if you want to check it out. Um, shameless plug. No shame. Yeah, no, no shame. shame. No shame. No, no shame. Yeah. Plug. yeah. Uh, I was actually nervous. And uh, and then, man, when fucking I hit that live button on the Twitch, on, on Streamlabs, and I went live. And, and you know, when you guys – and I was getting a lot of feedback through the day, too, fr from you guys um, about, like, hey, man, glad you're back. And then, like, the next day, even – you know, like, hey, man, yeah, man. It's so good to have you back. And I'm like, holy shit. I told my wife, I was like, man, like, yeah, I thought about not doing it again. I really did. I, I, yeah. I just thought about not doing it again. You know, um, not that I was doing anything else because I had that shit. <laughs> um, you know, not that I'm so busy. Uh, but, you know, I was just kind of like, well, you know, it, it's not a hassle, of course, but like, I wasn't keeping up with things. Right. Like, like I do when I have the show, right? Yeah. So, you know, and it, which was nice. So then when someone does send me like, hey, man, did you see this? I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't see it. It's like it's new again. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So it, it was nice. And that's the reason I said I'd come out with a new format that where like uh, I'm just going to talk about shit when I want to. I'm not going to have a schedule. I'm not going to yeah. do things once a week because you expect me to do things once a week. When I have con my show is going to be content driven. Mm -hmm. And but when I do have a show, it's going to be good. Yeah, because yeah. it's going to be shit that people want to hear. They and like again, the chat's always a key for me. And it's going to be shit, shit that you want to discuss. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel yeah. like you do that every week. Not that it gets watered down, but it could. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, and, especially uh, in time in like 2020, when not a whole lot is actually happening. Like, right. I mean, you have plenty of comic conversation to talk about right now. Right. But literally, other than that, like, no movies are coming out really. Nothing. Like, we got some here and there on streaming yeah. networks. That's it. That's so, it. So yeah, I, I get it. But I mean, I would I would say like I was was extremely excited for your show to come back. Uh, and I, I think it's 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 a thing like when you find your tribe, right? Like your community yeah. that, yes. that appreciates what you do and you appreciate what they do. Yes. Like when that's gone for a time and then it comes back, like it, it, you just realize what, what you, what you love and what you miss. You miss. And yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so I'm, I'm thrilled that you're back. I'm so Thank excited. You. The blazing, Def- or yeah, the blazing defender report is back. And, and uh, guys, really, we can't stress enough. go, Right after this video is over with, yep. go check it out. You're going to love it. And honestly, I learn – I'm a huge comic nerd. Yeah. I learn stuff every show because this man is like a guru compared to me. I, I, I make comics. He, he like lives <laughs> comics. So, <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, those that can't create, read them. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you, you do the I best do. job at that, my friend. You, you know your stuff for sure. Thanks. Yeah, um, I mean, I watched uh, – or. I listened to one episode and watched one episode today just okay. because I I wanted to like have some context for who you were before we <laughs> talked, you know. Yeah, smart. Um, yeah. And I I I was entertained the whole time. It was it was great from start Man, to finish. Man, that's that's mm-hmm. awesome. And yep. you know, I try to tell people that I'm like, you know, you may not know what I'm talking about. If, if, if you don't like comics, you don't watch. I don't want you watching. Yeah, really. yeah. Sure. Uh, you know, because you're not going to know what I'm talking about. But if you need a break, if uh, you want maybe to accidentally laugh at just some joke, <laughs> right. that I Dude, I'm good with that because, honestly, and I told my wife this, you know, right now especially, and, and it's kind of a double-sided coin with what you were just saying, Brian, mm-hmm. you know, with COVID and everything, like, you know, this is, the world's different. And now maybe more than ever, uh, it's more important to do my show. Like, my show's not changing fucking lives or anything, <laughs> right. but what, what it might do, what it might do is someone that's having a fucking shit week, a yeah. shit fucking day, a shit fucking year, shit month, whatever. And you can turn on my show, you can have a beer, smoke a cigarette, a cigar. I don't give a shit. Sit there with a box of grapes. I don't care. A juice <laughs> box. And, 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 and forget about it. Forget about you're forgetting about your shitty job. You're forgetting about wearing your mask. You're forgetting about, you know, everything for just a minute because I'm going to talk about Game of Thrones or I'm going to talk yeah. about The Mandalorian. And yeah. that show's getting ready to start the Mandalorian, uh, the Mandalorian, the Mondo yes. monologues is getting ready to start up next week. Uh, so so check that out. That's the show I do with with Dennis Robinson and Casey Strohs. Um, and they're, they're great. And you know, like we're gonna we're gonna talk about a show that you like. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, and you can just forget about it for a minute. I, escape, which is why I like comics. Uh, which I think a lot of people like comics. They like that fantasy genre because it's not your life. You like yeah. Dungeons and Dragons because you could be a badass warlock and go yeah. smash shit. You know what I mean? Cast spells and you know. You know, when you go to, the, you know, your cubicle tomorrow morning and, you know, you're like, did you get those reports done, John? You know, oh, <laughs> damn it. I was playing Dungeons and Dragons. Was, <laughs> last night. Uh, you know, so that's it, that escape. And, and if I can provide that for five, ten minutes, man, that's, yeah. that's I'm good with that. I really yeah. am. And, and, and I enjoy it. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm not doing it like I said, I'm not doing it to change the world. You know, I'm not Bill yeah. and Ted. But, uh, you know, I, I that was such a good movie. movie. Yeah, I well, love, yeah, oh, my gosh. It was so man. great. Classic. They're classic. Uh, but yeah, but, you know, so that's why I got into podcasting, man. Um, that was a, the longest answer. Yeah. No, that was perfect, dude. That was great. <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> what do you think some of the biggest challenges uh, have been to you starting your podcast? And like, how did you work through those? Wow. It's pretty good. Um, well, some of the biggest, ch- <laughs> you know, w- again with me, man, it's, uh, I, I live by this. Keep it, keep it simple, stupid. Um, you know, cause I'm stupid. So I, you know, it, it's like, 
I would Google shit, right? Uh, mm. The biggest thing, especially for me going to the live stream. So, all right, great question. And I just thought of this. So I went to Dragon Con uh, with the network I used to be with, uh, the Giant Size Team Up Network, which is no more. Mm-hmm. But uh, a few years ago, you know, we would all go to Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we were in charge of panels. We would get to do our shows live in front of a live audience and all this other stuff. So, and I mean, there were podcasters there for like, you know, tw- guys have been podcasting for 20 years. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, holy shit, there were podcasts back then? You know, <laughs> and uh, you, you really got these great panels and you learned a lot from these guys. These guys have experience, you know, no matter what what has changed technology-wise, these guys still, you can always learn something from them. So I would, I would go to these panels, I'd listen to these guys talk and it was odd, they were having a panel on uh, live streaming. Now, this was four years ago, mm. five years ago. And I was doing my show on Facebook Live. Yeah. And I wasn't on the panel. Okay. And I didn't care. You know, uh, Charles McFall, which was was the head of our, our network, he was kind of in charge of, of, of all the panels. And I'm just sitting there and I'm listening. You know, and a lot of these guys on the panel hadn't even been live. Yeah. So Charles goes, it's Trav. Where's Travis at? Where's Where's Travis at? And I'm like, <laughs> hi. He goes, <laughs> come here, come here, come here. And I went up there, and, you know, you know, 150 people in this fucking, you know, one one of the uh, we called it the podcasting track, but it was one of the, yeah. the convention centers down there. And he's like, uh, you do your show on Facebook Live? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, well, tell us, you know, how do you? I'm like, yeah, man. Uh, well, I have a tripod, and I got this thing on Amazon that I could put my iPhone in it, and I have a blue Yeti snowball and the USB adaption and Yeti snowball. Just, yeah, I just hit it. Yeah. I just hit record, and I go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's easy. You know what I mean? Uh, it, there's no production value. Not like my show is now. You know, I have theme music and all this other yeah. bullshit. Yeah, uh, but it was raw, and it was ra- it was really raw. And um, you know, these guys were looking at me like I had fucking three heads, you know. And, and I got in you know, my first year, I got nominated for a podcasting award, mm-hmm. uh, which you know these guys couldn't believe. You know, Charles was like, "We well, you know, did you get nominated this year?" I'm like, "I did," you know. And they were like, "Yeah, you know, I got ten thousand followers, motherfucker, and I didn't get nominated." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I've got like a hundred, <laughs> but they all voted." You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. my fans are rabid. Right. You know what I mean? They really are. So when you talk about challenges, you know, uh, technology was probably the biggest challenge for me. Um, and, and, and not so much that it was hard, but like, you know, with, you know, what am I going to use? I'm going to use Streamlabs. Okay. Now I got to learn Streamlabs. Uh, yeah. Now Twitch is the thing, right? Yeah. So now, now I don't want to lose my Facebook audience, but I want to go to Twitch which I am a Twitch affiliate now, which is, which is nice. Uh, it affords me some other things, but uh, now I want to multicast cause I don't want to lose my Facebook audience. Right. You know what right. I'm saying now, now granted th- this is all live streaming TV shit. Uh, as far as you know, like the podcasting thing, you know, good mics key, of course. Um, and you know, it, with, with like you guys, you guys are great. I've had some guests on before and, and, and when I've had them on again, I've had to tell them like, Hey guys, like a pet peeve of mine is talking over people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. be, 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 be conscious of it. It's going to happen. You know, we yeah. did it tonight, but we've always like, Oh, I'm sorry, Jeremy, you go ahead. You're I'm yeah. sorry, Brian, you know, cause I'll talk. I'll just keep fucking talking. So you <laughs> have to cut me off. Well, it's, it's just, it's natural. It's natural the way to, you know, to do that, but it's, it's one thing to be rude and doing it. And, and then, you know, exactly, yeah. Like you, you always let somebody finish a point. You right. know what I mean? Uh, you know, we all watched the first presidential debate. And you're like, oh, my God, if you guys oh. were podcasters, <laughs> I would know not to do this. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, so when you say challenges, uh, you know, I, I, I guess those are mine. Uh, you know, just the technological side point, the streaming yeah. Uh, yeah. part of it, you know, getting my rig, my, my computer rig, you know, able my Internet speed up to stream and. And all that, you know, you don't want to have a stream and it be laggy and all that shit. Uh, because I do feel like, you know, you guys were talking about doing live shows. I do think that is um, the next step. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, audio's great. And I love audio when I'm cutting grass, you know, when I'm driving, I'm always listening to podcasts, always listening to them. Uh, and you don't want to be watching that shit, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, because you can't. Uh, but, you know, having good audio, I have a great producer, uh, which, which I met through the network, and he still does my shit today, Mike Woodard. Mike at the mic.com. He's fantastic. Uh, you know, he's like, you had a weird vibration in the background. I edited it out. I was like, Oh, that was my me. air conditioner going. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he makes me sound professional and, yeah. uh, you know, that, that's a big thing too, you know, audio quality. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, and I don't know if you guys do this. I'm, I'm curious actually, because I hate, and I know this is, you're going to Google it. And you're going to find this as, a, as, a, as something to do. And I'm like, I'll try it. Oh, no, nah, can't do it. Uh, you're supposed to go back and listen to your shows. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah we, we do it. We do it every for, week, Jeremy. Because see, Jeremy, for, I just show up and talk. <laughs> Jeremy does literally everything else. He's and like the brains. He's, yeah, he's the producer. He's the editor. That's him. Yeah. Um, well, and, I mean, that's uh, Lucius Fox. Exactly. Exactly. That's and, been uh, my job for you know, the last. Yeah, two he three loves years. it. So, yeah. 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 So you, you do the editing and stuff too, Jeremy. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice, and he's man. and he's fantastic. And every week now, uh, Jeremy oh. will send uh, the you know the the previous the episode that's about to come out the next week. Right. He'll send it, and we'll both watch it just for you know just to kind of look through it you know, see yeah. what see what mistakes may still be there whatever okay. and so far there haven't been any because he's a magician uh, but um well but <laughs> i did spell your name wrong that, <laughs> i don't want to throw one episode the bus. that was hilarious i looked up and you know like you would think that it would be like a lot of people misspell my name brain because those yep. two letters that's you know, what i was just about to they ask. get tricky but it wasn't it was a, it's just a straight y yeah. right there man okay. just b-r-y-a-n i was like that has never been my name yeah i've like, known him <laughs> since middle school like we've why? known each other for, since middle school and, and he, yeah yeah but um <laughs> even but the file name this is the funniest part the file name it said brian's lower third it was spelled right yeah but the yeah, actual really. graphic had a y so I don't went in there and misspelled it. Yeah, and I was like, weird. Bro. but yeah. see, that is literally the only thing that, that has, that, <laughs> that he has done incorrectly. Nice. Jeremy is amazing at this show. That, and, that's uh, good, man. Yeah. I, don't edit I love it. Shit. Like, and, and I don't really don't think Mike edits shit, honestly, like, because my show was my show. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's like, I'm live and you know, every once in a while, if I do something pre-recorded, I'll be like, Hey man, we kind of got off on a tangent here. It really didn't mean shit. We, we get rid of it, you know, yeah. and I'll have the, I'll have the, the number track for him just to make it easy. Yeah. So he can just go, Oh, okay. From, from four minutes to here, you know, we'll cut yeah. that out. Yeah. Uh, but no, normally it's like, it, it, and again, keep it simple, stupid. Like I need easy. Yeah. And before I had Mike, I, I wasn't going to edit anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's great that you do. I'm not, no, I'm, I'm not saying that I, that's way professional. That's great. I know Dennis, uh, Dennis uh, Robinson from Botch Podcast. You know he does all the editing for them guys, and they're doing a D and D campaign that is four to five hours long. Gosh, and they're drunk. It's like and my worst he's nightmare. Constantly hitting the button that gives it the red dot on the yeah. on the graphic line, so he knows where to go back in and edit out. Oh my like, gosh! Like, oh, I need to take this out. I need to take this out. I'm like, God, Dennis, man, you need to, you need to get a fucking producer, yeah. dude. You need an yeah. editor, you know, Jeez. but you know, he likes doing it too. I think, uh, so he does, you know, he wants to do that, uh, yeah. which, you know, well, you're at, taking ownership of your show. So, well, at my, at my previous job, I'm a freelancer now, but at my previous job, I was working for a podcast company and they, oh. they said like one, they said like four minutes for every one minute that's how long they want me to spend editing something. Oh shit. Yeah. That's wow. so much. <laughs> it, they said like over that is, is too much time. It's going to not be worth it for them. Yeah. You know, what they have to pay me to do it. So like something like you're talking four to five hour campaign, just multiply that by four. And that's how that's how long I was spending editing things. And so, oh my god, that that just right then that just gave me indigestion. Yeah, I dude, can't handle that. It's that's I, I, like, I need a nap. 
yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's some shows that like you're saying and i think like you know with like a, a joe rogan sort of thing sure long format it, it's long format it's yeah. good that way sure taking things out people are going to feel like they're not getting the whole conversation exactly. yeah and so some things are good but you know right I didn't have control over what I was going to be editing each day. Right. You know, I just kind of yeah. got assigned things and, you know, you're talking about like medical things or, you know, and it's just like, Oh my God, he would I don't, tell me, I don't oh. know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, oh. it's just so awful. Yeah. That he would, does sound awful. he would tell me stuff like text me throughout the day and be like, this is what I'm listening to right now. And I'm like, dude, how are you not jumping off of a cliff? <laughs> so <awful. laughs> good grief. I just had to like take breaks and like walk outside. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> I can't imagine my brother in law oh. who's a, is a camp. Well, he's not a cameraman anymore. I still like when people know him, I'm like, they're like, Oh, what's he, what's he doing? I'm like, Oh, well, he's a cameraman for ESPN and TV oh, cool. and Churchill Downs. That's cool. and, He's not. He's a <laughs> producer now. Uh-huh. <laughs> so he's not been behind a camera in a long time. But yeah, when I first knew him, that's that's my my wife's brother. Uh, I've known him for 20 years. You know, he would be at a, uh, you know, when, when University of Louisville hosted the College World Series, he was there for 12 baseball games. Mm, you know, like almost 17 hours worth of news behind a, you know, stand up yeah. the entire day. And I'm like, oh my God, Richie, you know, yeah. and he, yeah. he loves baseball. Yeah. Like I would have rather jumped into, you know, a pit of vipers uh, <laughs> with covered in, you know, I don't know what vipers eat, like uh, mouse blood, yeah. uh, you know, then do that. Yeah. Um, but you know, he, he's, he, it paid off for him. And like mm-hmm. I said, now he works exclusively for Churchill Downs and TVG does row to, uh, the Kentucky Derby. He does oh, all that, cool. he does all that video. Nice. Thing. Uh, cool. which he's always like, man, we need to get together and do something. We need to I'm like, shut up, Richie. Like <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you did my wedding video. I still don't have one. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's something that, you know, I don't have in me. Uh, to do and, and and like you said, you know, with like Rogan's pocket, not that I'm comparing myself to Rogan at all, but my format is a long format. Yeah, and and I feel like if if I was to cut something out, it may be something that somebody actually wanted to hear. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I don't have a I don't have a lot of dead air. I'm always I'm always talking, always yeah. talking. And, uh, you know, if, if I have a, like a technical problem or something like that, of course I'll go and edit it out later. Uh, but it's up there, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, you guys will see, you know, you guys are talking about doing live stuff. You'll see, you know, it's uh, yeah. it's, it's different, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't think you guys will have a problem at all uh, with it, unless there's something that you're looking for, of course. Right. Like, you, And again, so like for everybody that, you know, to ask me about podcasting, you know, uh, finding your voice, right? Yeah. And like, it sounds cliche, but it, it, it really, it's true. It's um, I, I my show now on, on Twitch and in, in the in the uh, the visual uh, aspect of it is kind of what I envisioned my show to be. Yeah, uh, Streamlabs gives me those opportunities to to do that stuff, which I'm grateful for. Um, but you know, like you need you you need to find your voice. Yeah. Like, and you guys have you got like this show today, just just from what I've been on, like meeting, getting to know your dingo. You know that's what I right. mean? Like that's awesome. I love that yeah. shit, man. Yeah. Like you all have it. You all have it segmented. Why? Why? Thank you. Thank you, Sir Dingo. Yeah. Jones. Yes. <laughs> yes. As as I spoke about myself in third person. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I love that. Uh, I think it's great. And and you know, I actually uh, he's an ex coach of mine that teaches uh, English at the University of Louisville. He had a bunch of uh, students that were wanting to start podcasting, and he's an avid watcher of my show. And yeah. he's like, "No, what the no? You <laughs> no? What are you talking about?" So he had me come in, which was odd, you know, coming in to University of Louisville. I graduated ninety eight, yeah. so it was like, "Holy shit, I'm coming back in Davidson Hall. I've been in Davidson yeah. Hall, you know, twenty years." Yeah, and uh, you know, he's like, "Look, I want you to just, you know." tell them like i know you have notes and i know you have an outline and i do like yeah. 
you wouldn't know it from watching my show. <laughs> like, this dude didn't fucking prepare at all. He just gets behind a microphone and talks. It's not true. I really wish it was. Uh, I would forget half the shit if I didn't have it wrote down in front of me. Yeah. Even the, even the questions you gave me today, I wrote shit down so I wouldn't forget. Because <laughs> uh, my memory sucks. But so, you know, and I told him, I'm like, well, you know, I have an intro. I have a sign out. You know, I have a sign out that I do. Uh, if I need to thank someone for something, I do yeah. that. Uh, th- and then there's the business aspect. You know, I've had some sponsors in the past where I had to do reads. Yeah. So I had mm-hmm. to put that in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'll forget it if I don't have the outline. And I still right. forget it, you know, but I don't forget as much when I have mm-hmm. my outline. And they were all like, oh, we just stopped podcasting. We're just, you know, getting on a just, microphone. Just it jump in be. there and talk. It can, yeah. yeah, it can. Everybody Some people do that. Can be. Yeah. And I told them that. I'm like, that's not wrong. Anything you want to do is correct. But if you want to suck, you go right ahead and do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you want to at least be decent, you know what I mean? Like I said, I was nominated. I've been nominated twice. Yeah. Uh, I would have got nominated. I, I, I say I would have got nominated. I don't know if I'd have got nominated again, uh, you know, but I was on my hiatus when, when nominations were done. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, I don't know. I, I love this format. I love this platform. Uh, and have I said thank you for having me on today? I yeah. think you have, but yeah. I don't yeah, think I have. Yeah, I think you did. A total dick move by me. No, I think you did. <laughs> and it, you know, hey, if you didn't, we already felt it in our hearts. Well, yeah. so. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And like I, mean, I said, Brian's been a guest on my show several times, and he's been fantastic. We have a great time, me and Brian. Oh, it's a blast, man! It's um, so much fun. Yeah, but th- so, but thank you guys. I really, I really do yeah. appreciate being here. Absolutely, on. man. We're we're glad to have you, and happy yeah. you're here. Um. But uh, just to, to, you know, kind of get a couple more questions out there before we start wrapping up, Mm -hmm. Um, what interview uh, has meant the most to you and why? That's a good one. Well, it's easy for me. It's really easy for me. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've interviewed Peter David. I've interviewed Jim Starlin. I've interviewed um, Philip Kennedy Johnson. I've interviewed Jason Fabok. Uh, Brian Rodman is my by far my oh stop it my most most important interview <laughs> my funnest interview <laughs> no really no really oh no, Brian, no. That's great <laughs> Brian's fantastic um but besides Brian I was about to say if you really if you really landed there we no you're gonna have to choose something else because there's no way oh, you're still you're so people, short brother you're still there's you're so no short. way uh I, man it's weird you know Starlin was great um Peter David was interesting yeah uh, and because yeah, of, I remember you telling me about that one. yeah man that yeah. was a uh, that was something else. It ended up being fantastic. <laughs> yeah. But it didn't start out that struggle. way. Yeah. And I was at the point, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. You know, and there's a meme out there that says, you know, fuck, it's got me through some tough things. And I'm yeah. like, yep, the Peter David interview. I said, fuck it. And it ended up working out. Now, really <laughs> quick for our listeners and viewers yeah. who don't know who Peter David is. Okay. Um, go yeah. ahead and explain that. Yeah. Peter David was the creator. Uh, he was, uh, he's written, uh, he created uh, Spider Gwen. Mm-hmm. which right. I know a lot of people love. He created the Maestro, which was an alternate future version of the Hulk. Um, he's create, he's written, uh, he wrote the screenplay for Wrath of Khan. Which okay. I actually favorite. didn't know that. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Cool. He's written, yeah. he's written several screenplays for Star Trek TV shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's an acclaimed novelist uh, and kind of an asshole. Like, <laughs> If he's good at anything, yeah. he's good at being an asshole. Uh, but no, he he was he, he's uh, really really like uh, influential writer, and he's got some fantastic stories, man. Mm-hmm. Really, once you get him going, he's got some fantastic stories. Which I still well, I, when we used to have these things called cons, and you yeah, go and man. You meet people and you know, oh, I miss talk it. to people and everything. Uh, he's he, you know. We, I would see, I seen him at IndyCon just a couple of years ago, and he remembered me, and we talked for a while. He's just, he's a gross, disgusting individual. Uh, <laughs> you really don't even want to get too close to the cat, but uh, like he knows his shit, and, and yeah. he, 
got this amazing, amazingly creative mind. Hmm. Uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson, man, you know what? He may be my favorite. Uh, yeah. Here's why. So uh, I was a huge fan of this guy. So Philip Kennedy Johnson, if you don't know, he's writing a comic book called The Last God for DC's Black Label. It is mm. amazing. If you're a fantasy person, like when I say fantasy person, I mean Lord of the Rings, yeah. uh, D&D, any of that shit. High fantasy has never been done so gorgeously and so well written as the last god it it, they've already created a role-playing game out of this this shit is blowing up it will be a movie one day no doubt promise you that how many issues are they in there are nine nine came out last week Mm -hmm. uh he just had a one shot come out he's i mean dude he's got music i mean if you like game of thrones any of that shit you're yeah. going to love, 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 love the last guy. And that's not his best work, in my opinion, which is crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. Ricardo Federici is the artist. He is Rasad Rabikish. It, every, every panel looks painted, like oil painted. Yeah. It, it's, it's amazing. Just, that's cool. Just check out the last God images. And the yeah. covers that come up are the interiors, which mm-hmm. you know, Brian will tell you in comics is rare. It's, you know, it is. It, it, it frustrates art. me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Because yeah. you buy this comic because it's gorgeous. And then you open it up and it looks like your, your nephew did it. And you're like, yeah. what the fuck is this? Yeah. I paid six dollars for this shit. But the last guy, trust me. It, okay. it, I mean, everybody I've turned on to that don't even like fantasy loves it. But so so uh he did a book for Boone Studios. Uh, which I wish I, I can't wait till this airs and Chad, you know, Chad and us, he's like, as long as we get some indie comics in this show, <laughs> he thinks I don't talk about indie comics, which they are my favorite, by the way. Um, you know, uh, it was uh warlords of the Appalachia, which Philip is from Kentucky. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. But he, he lives in DC. Now he's in the army, plays trumpet from the army, uh, marching band. They go everywhere. They sit him all over the country. It's like kind of a big deal. And um, he did this comic called Warlords of the Appalachia, and it's set in Kentucky. It's futuristic. It's uh, post-apocalyptic. It's awesome. Mm. I loved it, loved it, loved it. And I reached out to him several times on Twitter. You know, he, we would kind of talk back and forth. So he did a signing at the Great Escape on Barstown Road. I'm at the firehouse oh, on uh, Dutchman's in Taylorsville. Okay. So I tweet – Oh, hey, Philip, <laughs> when you're done with your signing at the Great Escape, come down to the firehouse at the corner of Taylorsville and Dutchman's Lane, and you can deliver me my <laughs> autographed copy. That's awesome. Okay? So I ended up falling asleep on the couch like most firemen do at some <laughs> point of the day, and they come and get me up. They're like, hey, man, somebody's at the door for you. Oh, no. And I'm way. like, what? Who the fuck? And so I get up, I walk out, and – I knew who exactly who he was. He's standing in the bay in front of the fire truck. And he's like, he's got this comic book in his hand. He goes, you're Travis. <laughs> I said, I am. He goes, I got your comic. Oh, awesome. that's so awesome. And that's it's cool. signed to the blazing defender. Yeah. You know? oh, that's and great. Like, Holy shit. So, and getting him on the show and, and, you know, we, it was just, it was a great conversation. He's super smart and he's, he's a great guest um i've actually got him to come to come to louisville and get do some other small signs of comic book shops and uh just from like going to the flea markets and stuff and they watch my show and they're like hey you interviewed philip Kennedy," and i'm like yeah i was like uh you want to come to the shop and do a signing yeah and they're like Are you serious? <laughs> and i'm like I-, I can put you in contact i don't know what he charges i don't know if he char- i don't yeah. know yeah he's blowing up so you need to get him now you know and i would just reach out to philip and he was like I'm going to be in Kentucky on these dates, give him my number, blah, blah, blah. I mean, he's just such a fantastic guy. Yeah. That's, that's cool. so cool, man. It, yeah. I love, so cool. I, I love when you meet your, your heroes or people yes. that you look up to and they, and they actually they end up, up being, yeah, they look, they end up being really decent human beings. Yeah. I, I, I love that. And I'll tell you actually, something about Philip, man, like even being new in the game, he's not afraid to, uh, to say shit. Like, we actually end up talking about, uh, you know, some artists in in, in the industry that are revered, 
Yeah. And Philip made no bones about like, yeah, this dude wouldn't give me the time of day. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, and I'm like, wow, because I've met him at cons and he was dick. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. and it, it, like I said, you can you can catch that interview on iTunes. Uh, all those all those interviews that I've done with those guys, Jim Starlin, uh, the creator of Thanos, he was a great interview as well. Yeah. But you know, Philip Philip was a guy that he and I just kind of hit it off. You know what I mean? Like I don't look at him like I do look at him as a fantastic creator, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel like he's a friend. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's weird. that's a, that's a really cool that's a really cool really dynamic. Cool. And you wouldn't have had that had it not been for your podcast. And that that's such a cool, exactly. um, yeah, yes. I think that's such a, that's a cool yeah, podcasting dynamic. has opened up a lot of avenues that, uh, in, 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 well, you and I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would have never maybe have met if it hadn't been for, for the show and, you know, uh, me, me, you know, meeting Chad and meeting you and, you know, it's just, um, it's opened up a world. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and then people, you know, some people are like, oh, you do a podcast? You know what I mean? <laughs> right, uh, right. You know. Yeah, so, man. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, Travis. If you could interview any creator, who would it be and why? Man. Comics, movies, TV, any, any creator. Man, it's such low-hanging fruit. <laughs> Do you and Brian is laughing right now because he knows, and I really wanted to go another direction. I really, really, really did, but I just like so. I have a list of like, and they're actors though. They're actors that I want to meet. I don't even want to meet them. I want to have beer with them. I want to drink beer with them and just talk, just like us us three have talked tonight. Yeah. Uh, just hang out, nerd out, whatever. Uh, but a creator. So I'm going to stick with the question. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pivot on this because that's not what heroes do. We don't pivot. Um, it's going to be Zach. Yeah. It's going to be Zach because Zach Snyder. Yeah. Uh, because I'm just, I feel like he may fit both of those roles yeah. he's creator but he's a fan and it's all you had to do is to watch his movies yeah to know that he's a fan of what he does yeah and that's you know i don't want a guy that's you know making a movie because he's being paid a lot of money to and he ends up making a great movie not saying he don't the russos are fans as well not not yeah. saying they're not but i feel i feel emotion and brian knows this as well i feel emotionally invested in zach because i've been in some wars online yeah. on my show yeah. because some of my listeners are very anti-snyder which yeah. is odd because they still watch my show yeah uh, because they know how much i love him oh yeah. and i've got out look so when you had me back on yeah i was already ready I was ready, Brian. You got it. I love this. This is so good. I've got, I was ready. <laughs> That's awesome. I was ready. I was going to have a wardrobe yeah. change. Yeah. Yeah. Wardrobe. No, really, in all seriousness though, like Snyder, like just watching like his, like his, um, you know, video commentaries that he's done for his own movies and, and you know, his, 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 uh, his interaction with fans on yes. uh, Vero yes. is so like, refreshing yes that he just it, he, and i agree with you like i feel like he's my friend and he doesn't even know who i am <laughs> yeah. like it's like and it's because like i've rooted we you know a group of us have rooted for him and have really fought and and debated and yes. and and really wanted to see his vision yes come to life uh for justice league and he, it's it's I mean, I say he's my favorite director because of the sentimental stuff that comes along with all of that. Yeah. Exactly. Like you could say, I could totally agree. Like there are better directors out there. For sure. sure. Absolutely. But, but Zack Snyder means a lot more to me than right. they do. Um, well, so, yeah, he's, no. a, he's a case study. Like, yeah, this is the first like crowdsourced movie. You know what I mean? Because yeah, it's history. Like, yeah. They're like, no, we're not accepting this. 
you need to do it. And yeah. the, for the first time in the entire world, the the production companies were like, okay, let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ryan and I have argued this, you know, for a couple of years now. We're like, dude, there's money to be made. Yes. Why wouldn't they want to make the money? And yeah. now it's not even it's not even that. It's like, oh, well, we're just going to pay for some special effects to get the cut out. Um, no, we're gonna we're paying for reshoots yeah. Yeah. of characters that weren't even in the movie because that was your original vision. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's gonna be million dollars in reshoots for this movie. So uh, let me. I'm gonna ask you guys a question. Okay, all right. Y'all had me on the fucking hot seat. All night. I'm put you on the <laughs> um, what do you do? You give any credibility credence at all to the rumor? that and i there are some guys in the stunt the stunt uh man community that i i i've i have befriended over the years mm-hmm. and they've kind of they 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 none of the guys that i i know personally did worked on any Zack Snyder film okay yeah. they know guys one guy has a roommate that was on 300 oh, um, cool. but they they personally did not but yeah. they hear like it's a very the stuntman community in Hollywood is very very tight knit. It's yeah. a, almost akin to like special forces. Yeah, it's uh, like we don't talk about movie secrets. We don't. I mean, like we don't even need an NDA. We're not saying shit. Yeah. yeah. So and they have said to me because they are fans as well, most of them, um, that there is r- r- reliable sources that say that HBO Max is contemplating doing a Batfleck universe. Oh, yeah. With Snyder's vision. Yeah, no, I actually, wow. I went down a big, scary YouTube, Google rabbit hole the other day on this very topic. Really? Because, yeah, because I've been seeing all the rumors that have just been flying around Facebook and social media that Ben yeah. Affleck signed for five movies and all this stuff. And, and you know, you take that with a grain of salt. You, right. you never know what's true. Sure. But um, but the some stuff has come out recently by the cultured nerd who has – Mm-hmm. had some he's pretty got a good track record he's got a good track record especially yes. with dc stuff so um like he was the one who was the first one to leak that michael keaton was going to be in the flash yes. uh yes. and that ben affleck was going to be in the flash and lo and behold that you know that's it's happening yes. uh and so and m- among other rumors so i think there is i think there is at least talks it's happening shit. Yeah, uh, I, I think there's at least talks happening, and and I do believe um, if they're smart, and and you know if I'm if I'm AT and T, Warner Brothers, HBO Max people, I, I'm I'm seeing the hype for yes, Justice yep. League. I'm seeing how many people, you know, first of all, the fans were the one to ma- ones to make this happen exactly. to begin with. Right. So you have a following. You know, yeah. you're going to have people. And right. and if you do it through HBO Max, first of all, you really you're really pushing DC stuff anyway. Yeah, exactly. Through D- through HBO Max, and then on top of that, you don't have to worry about box office right politics. Right. You don't have to worry about you know the the Rotten which, Tomatoes which scores climate, preventing people from going to the in movies, this, in this stuff climate, like that. No one's going to the movies right now. Right. 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 Yep. What exactly. a perfect, I mean, like the perfect storm. Like I've, I told my wife this, you know, which she didn't get it. <laughs> you know, she gave me this like, really? <laughs> uh, in 2020, what is the best news? I, I mean, the best news that I've had in 2020 was released the Snyder Cut. Me yeah. too. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So it, it, it's kind of fitting the theme of this year, like on the bright side of the, the pros of the year. Uh, you know, with movie, you know, movie theater, you know, ticket sales being down, you know, yeah. the threat of COVID and all this other stuff. Hey, how about creating a streaming universe with already a rabid fan base? Yeah. yeah. Just HBO sense. is like the they have made such a, an incredible move. Yeah. Bringing all of the DC uh, shows from yes uh what was their streaming service uh um, dc 
Oh, DC, DC Plus? Universe. DC. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, something like that. No, like, it wasn't Disney DC. Plus. I think it was just DC Universe. It was DC okay. Universe, yeah. Yeah. But, like, bringing all of them on and then now doing this, like, I, I can't imagine how exponential the growth is. Of, yeah. You know, people that now are saying, yeah, sure, I'll pay $20 a month. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I have forever. direct TV. I get it for free. Yeah. There you go. I have a, I have direct TV and AT&T, which I know it's regional bundle and all that shit. But, you know, here I have direct TV with AT&T. I get HBO for free. I get HBO Max for free. Yeah. So, yeah. hey, if you don't have direct TV, you know, you might, you might want to try it. Yeah. Uh, I think that, it, it, you know, when the Snyder Cut is finally here, you know, it's four installments, correct? Four installments? Yeah, four one-hour-long installments. Right. Yep. Uh, if it's a fucking smash, which I think we all think it will be, yeah, you know, I think the sky's the limit. I here's, think that's what they're waiting on. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, here's the thing. Even if just the Snyder Cut avid fans show up and watch it, that's going to be enough to do more. The haters are going to show up too. Yeah. Which is the yeah. best part. They're going to show, yeah, they're going to show up just to watch it. And then the numbers are going to go up and they're oh, going to yeah. be complaining. And it's yeah, like, well, it's, it's fantastic. It's like yeah. I said, it's, it's, it's the perfect storm. It's the haters yeah. are going to show up so they can bash it. Yeah. But you're still going to give us the numbers that we need. Right. And, yeah. and, and, you're and still now, buying HBO Max. You're still buying exactly. It. <laughs> and now what they've done is actually a brilliant move. Uh, they've really tapped into the multiverse as not just storytelling, but as marketing. Yep. So now marketing the multiverse, you can literally do whatever you want. So right. they can do a Snyderverse on HBO Max, and it has nothing to do with the DCEU that's in the movies. And they've already said it's a multiverse. That's and right. you can have people cross over randomly if you want to or, you, or not. Just and, like the comics. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yeah, just talking about, you know, Snyderverse and, and, and you know, we were, what what led us to this conversation was uh, the, the, the Batfleck uh, universe on HBO Max directed mm -hmm. by right. Snyder. Yeah, um, right. You know, and like I said, you know, I think we talked about it that, you know, we can we could definitely see that, you know, that happening. And, and yeah. With, Oh, for sure. Yeah. You I know, mean, with that's gun with gun suicide squad coming out, you know, like what a perfect opportunity to go. Okay. So this worked into DCU. We're going to keep that, this, this, yep. this, yeah. this, Oh, Margot Robbie's, uh, Harley Quinn. We're going to keep her, you know what I mean? And everything else yep. is like, it's yeah. done. You know, and, perfect. And I, I think that's, I think that's genuinely what, DC should do is yeah. what do whatever they think will work in the movie theaters and then do whatever else they want to do that fans are asking for on HBO max. Yeah. And, and you can literally, there's multiple, there's infinite possibilities that you can, that you can do. If you, if you want to, you know, reboot Superman, Batman 700 times, right. guess what? You can, because you there's can. now yeah. 700 earths, you right. know, all those things. Right. Uh, yeah, so I yeah, think that's, I think that's flipping that, that, idea that's been so like concrete in everybody's head that you know when like toby Maguire as spider-man and then yeah. andrew garfield as spider-man and then tom holland as spider-man i think a lot of times you think like we just need the same guy we want to have this big broad expanding thing right but what if it was all of them yeah like how much bigger could that be if everything was everything? You know, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 with the great thing about that, as a as a uh, um, a service provider, you get you keep the Holland fans, you keep the Maguire fans, you yeah. keep you know what I mean. Like you don't yep. lose anybody. I'd love to see what was what what was David Ayer's plan. Yes, Oops. yeah. You know, because apparently there was a shit ton more footage shot than we actually got to see yeah. in i mean suicide squad it's so. been confirmed by multiple sources that there was enough footage to essentially film a joker movie a joker movie because and, he, i mean leto was very yeah. vocal about it yeah because originally he was the main antagonist yes. it wasn't it wasn't this weird you know, the, 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 the enchantress uh, and her brother right. junk it wasn't yeah. that he it was him 
yeah, and it was a lot more about him and Harley Quinn and and Lo- and all of that sort. That. Yeah, and that. and apparently I didn't they hate sh- it. I didn't hate his. Take. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it wouldn't been in my favorite, but I didn't hate it at all. I mean, like the, and if you the said, music and it made it for me. Sure. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was the, so the music cool. was great. And yeah. then, honestly, like, I think it's honestly one of Will Smith's best performances. I do, too. I loved him in that movie. I, I did, too. He I like Will fantastic. Smith. I do, too. Yeah. I'm a, I, I like I, I'm a sucker for Will Smith. I, I I'll watch any movie he's in. I, I, I will also. I just I hate it that they cast him as Deadshot. Yeah. When Deadshot is the mask. Yeah. And, and then, I knew as soon as they cast Will Smith, Will Smith's going to be in the mask for the opening scene and you're never going to see the mask again. Yeah. You know? uh, there was a lot of problems with Suicide Squad. I'm not saying there wasn't. But if, if, if Ayers is correct in saying that the studio really cut up his vision, especially taking oh, yeah. the Joker out and all that other shit, uh, then, you know, then I will give him the, the, the benefit of the doubt. And there is a Ayers cut movement however there is, is. Yeah. Uh, yeah i'm behind it I, I, yeah. I, you know let us decide if it's well sucked. here's you the thing I mean? this is this is my take on this stuff what a concept let the creators of the movies actually tell you what is supposed to be that's told. what you hired them to do right don't 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 hire a director to make a different uh, to make a movie and right. then completely have and then hire a trailer company Right. To recut the movie and then yeah. reshoot half of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. How, how about this? How about you hire a guy to give you a vision of a universe? Yeah. Way through, go. you fire him. Uh, we're going to say it's some other bullshit. And then you're, we're going to bring in this guy from Marvel that was yeah. fantastic. And he's going to finish your vision. How about that? Yeah. And oh, then, that yeah. didn't work either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and honestly, like it's been it's been confirmed now that the reason that they pushed Justice League was because of bonuses yeah. for for the the executive producers at Warner exactly. Brothers who are no longer there. There, yeah. And that, yeah, like AT and T came in and was like, "This, yeah, because AT and T hierarchy has changed." Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. AT and T came in and was like, "Hold on." why did you do this this is yeah. stupid you guys are gone we're gonna get in touch with Zack snyder right yeah. Uh, yeah and and now you know and yeah. and hey look say what you want about jeff johns uh he's an amazing comic book creator yes. he's yes. an amazing storyteller in yes. comics he yes. needs to stay the f away from movies <laughs> like it the does, dude yeah. does not need to be anywhere near movies like he right. did green lantern it sucked Right. Um, you know, he, he tried to jump in and messed with Zack Snyder and Ben Affleck's vision yeah. for literally everything, everything. And, and, and we got this garbage that, yeah. that had come out. So like his home is comics and yes. he is great there. Yeah. And you know yep. what? I've heard he's a jerk. I've heard whatever that. Yes. I'm sure there's plenty of jerks that do that, that make really great content yeah. and sure. he can be a jerk and make great comics, but leave right. the movies alone to people who actually know what they're doing. Exactly. Um, exactly. I think just, he was, I, th- I don't know if he had Feige syndrome. I don't, I don't know, know what it was. I think, uh, I think he, I think he got a big head because I think that's exactly what it was because was. Warner brothers approached him. They were like, Hey, we don't really think this is working with Zack Snyder you know what you're doing right with comic with the comic side of things right. why don't you come in and do this which made no sense because of the last film that he did was a huge bomb yeah so uh, it, it squad? Made, no uh the last dc movie he was a part of that he wrote was the green lantern with green ryan lantern. reynolds green yeah that, i mean that was it, i mean and there were aspects of that movie i really enjoy i don't want to sure, me too the whole thing yeah, but, yeah for sure but yeah as a whole it just didn't work and and you know it just i don't know it's weird to me that you'll you're you're gonna run to that guy yeah um to 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 be your new kevin feige instead of Zack snyder I, but i'll be honest full transparency i'm a dingo so i can't lie can't lie on this show i'll lie on my show all day but i ain't gonna lie on your show <laughs> um you know when they when they said he was coming on to you know be feige yeah it, I think that's why they went and got him. They're like, oh, man, this Kevin Feige guy's r- ruling over here at Marvel. We need a similar cat in the DC farm. Yeah. 
happened at B, the bullpen, and they're like, oh, it's this Jeff Johns guy. He's a fantastic comic book creator, writer. Yeah. We all yeah. know this, uh, other than Three Jokers, which I'm going to get into that tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Going into Blazing Defender Report 7 o'clock tomorrow. Um, so uh, when he came on, and he was executive producer Wonder Woman. So Yeah, he was. That yeah. gave him a great springboard. Yeah. Uh, if you will, going forward. I mean, Wonder Woman was great. Not saying it wasn't. Yeah, it but was Captain America First Avenger, and we'll argue that all day, and I'll win that yeah. argument all day. I mean, we'll from see. the very beginning of it to the end of it, it was Captain America First Avenger. But, but see, uh, here's the thing with that. Like you're not you're not wrong at all about that. But but let's be honest. When did Marvel and DC ever not just directly copy each copy other. of each other i mean right. literally like you look at dark side and thanos <laughs> right. dark side was most i would actually most of it originates at dc absolutely and then marvel just says we can do this our way sure. and then they they i mean and it works like i'm not it it's I'm, I'm not saying it's bad it's just no. they they take a character they put a marvel spin right. on it and it works right. and that's fine this is, um, this is the thing that I'm really, 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 really digging about DC. And I think you and I would agree to this because we've talked about this a little bit with Snyder's vision, which is odd because they fired Snyder because of this and they're still doing it. Yeah. Snyder had a very adult, dark, gritty take on these characters, yeah. Superman especially. And Marvel was doing something different. And then Guardians of the Galaxy came out and it was funny. And they're yeah. like, oh my God, we need humor in our movies to make them to make them no, you um, don't. successful. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And they they got rid of Zach. And but they yet they still are producing and their most successful movies, other than Wonder Woman, of course, are these dark movies. Yeah. You know, Joker, the Titans TV show. Uh, yeah. I mean, like Doom Patrol. I mean, these things that are working for DC are dark yeah. and they're gritty. And I think that is kind of DC's niche. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I, I really I, I really believe that. And they're still not getting away from it. Yeah. Um, and I think I think Ayers' cut of, of Suicide Squad was a darker cut, especially if he had all the Joker shit in it. Yeah, well, if you, if you look it, at... If you look at the first trailer of Suicide Squad before the Bohemian Rhapsody trailer that changed everything, right? Right. right. If you watch the first one, that was the Ayers cut. That yeah. was it. It was dark. It was scary. I mean, the end of that, like they, you could tell they did a reshoot of the end. The end of the first trailer. Oh, for sure. Joker, when he's standing over Harley Quinn, yes. he said, "It's gonna hurt." Really, yes. really bad. Yes. That brought chills to me. Like yes. it was terrifying. Yes. Yeah. He looked phenomenal. He did. And then in the movie, in the movie, yeah. it, he says it a completely different way. Right. Not as scary. Right. It's, it's almost like he's trying to do it the opposite way. Exactly. Yeah. And failing. That's what they told him to do. Yeah. 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 And so, like, that's when I say, when I say I'm very interested to hear what. Uh, or to see what the Joker, what Jared Leto's Joker was supposed to be, that's what I want to see. I want to see the terrifying, cracked out, crazy yes Joker that Joker. he was supposed to be. Yeah. Chaos, chaos, yeah. you know, the living form of chaos. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, I mean, uh, that's what we want to see. I yeah, think. So I think when you look at like the what these directors did before, so you take like Joss Whedon, and you think, you know, he's done you know, great Marvel stuff. Sure. You know, but you look at, he also did like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So you're trying to like, okay, this is his vibe. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Marvel movies, Buffy, like Buffy had like monsters and things like that, but it was still so like tongue in cheek. Yeah. You, you don't bring him into, you know, like take away all the movies that have been done. DC is just darker. Right. Well, and, and, all the comics, they're just darker. They're just so darker. You can't, and, you can't and, have Buffy the Vampire Slayer right. do DC stuff. Well, and this this was the thing. You know, Joss had done Firefly. He had done, yeah. uh, which was fucking one of the best TV series of all time. But it was very, you know, at, at times lighthearted. And, and 
I'm not I'm not going to disagree with you on, on the on the Buffy thing. I am I will find you hard press to find a six foot, two hundred forty five pound Buffy the Vampire Slam, Slayer bigger fan than me because I absolutely love that show. I love I mean I I got made fun of. I didn't give a shit. <laughs> The defended Buffy to the fucking end. I turned people into Buffy the Vampire Slayer fans. Just watching. I love you. Yeah, That's you're the reason I watched the show. I, I didn't I didn't really watch it when I when it was on the air right. because right. I just I couldn't I was like, ah, I don't care. Yeah, a lot and of people then, did that. Yeah. And then one day oh my you God. were just talking about it on social media. You were like, This is the great one of the greatest shows of all time. It is. It and will. then I was like, you know what? It's on Hulu. I'll watch it. I watched the first few episodes and I was already hooked. And he's like, no, just wait, (laughs) just wait. (laughs) And it gets so much better. So like, that is not the type of show. And honestly, I watched angel when it first came out, but I didn't watch Buffy. Uh, I liked his character a lot. And and so now, yeah. And and so I'm really digging, like I found a list that actually has the episodes where you can watch them in order and stuff. And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but anyway, no, yeah, I, I believe you. Um, when I say that you are probably one of the biggest Buffy fans I've ever met. Yeah, loved it. Loved it. And, 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 and you know, it, it could be lighthearted, you know, which Josh is great at. Yeah. And it could be dark as fuck, which I think Josh is great at too. They didn't bring Josh on for that. Right. Because, again, I think they got rid of Zach, who had that, you know, that, that uh, end game of, uh, you know, no pun intended, of like this dark universe yeah, and they're yeah. like hey we need humor we need this you did it in avengers uh you know which you know age of ultron which didn't hit for marvel fans like a lot of people thought it would um it was still a darker you know we had a death of a superhero yeah right you know and and, and i thought it was great i yeah. still like age of ultron uh joss i'm a fan of whedon which i think you know the snyder cult has you know taking him on as the enemy you know he's yeah. he's our stalin you know what i mean yeah. like and it's like no man you know he just he was in a bad situation he did the best he could could you imagine going in to a movie a production you especially being an editor which you kind of know this yeah of three hours and plus of footage shot and they say we need to get rid of this, 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 and this. So you have about you have about seventy minutes, yeah, of shit you can use. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. It's it was an insurmountable task. Right. It was destined to fail from the fucking beginning. You can watch that movie, and I did go to the theater and watch it. And I went, Whedon, Whedon, yeah, Zach, yeah, Zach. <laughs> so you let me I mean? tell you this: the the whole time I did that with Robin. I was sitting because about twenty <laughs> about twenty minutes into the movie, I was pissed was like, already. I was mad. Cry. I was like, "This is a terrible movie." It, it literally to this day is still the worst, and probably always will be the worst theater going experience I've ever had. Um, I sat there, and the first time you see, like, of course, the cell phone Superman scene. I, the oh. first time I saw that, I was like, "What's up with his face?" <laughs> oh, I was so. Oh, no. And then, and then after that. Oh, then it was it was the Aquaman entrance scene, right? Yeah. So like you could tell the first like first of it was was Zach, yes. And then once they leave the building, it's all Joss. It's all Joss. It's all Joss. Ben Affleck looks different. Yes. Jason Momoa looks different. Yes. And there you can blatantly tell it's in front of a green screen. Oh, mm-hmm. oh my God! I'm so bad. Like no, I was okay. like, what is this? And yeah. then, and then the the break the 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 moment that I broke in the theater, <laughs> and I just I looked at my wife and I said, "This is the worst movie I've ever seen." Was only twenty minutes in oh my to the movie, and it was the 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 Lois Lane, um, uh, Martha Kent scene where Martha Kent says, "Clark said you were the thirstiest reporter he's ever met," and I was like, "I'm done." I'm done with this movie. This is that is the dumbest line I have ever oh heard. God, you're right. And and I was like, this. I'm done. I'm I'm finished. It it was awkward. You could tell the actresses did yes. not want to be doing it. Like, yeah, right. I was like, no, I'm done. And then you know, and then you get <laughs> Batman, you know, cracking jokes while Superman just threw him across the the, the great lawn. And I'm like, oh, yeah. no, I, I can't. This That's is not terrible. Batman style. It's no not Batman. 
he just you know it's it's not batman it's not yeah. batman and ben affleck didn't want to do it you could just tell the the, tell. the actors didn't want to be a part of it they didn't want to be a part of it and i i mean they basically most of them come out especially ray park yeah. they basically oh, come yeah. out and said that yeah you know like we knew and it's funny like uh the the, the editor photography uh there's there's several people that were on that set for both directors and they were just like this is not the movie Zack Snyder shot. Yeah. No. Like we could tell watching these these scenes being filmed, this is not the movie that that the fans should have gotten. You know yeah. what I mean? Now granted they they might not have been comic book fans, they may have been, but they've been in the industry, they knew what yeah. was good and what wasn't. And like you said, it's very evident even on these actors' faces. Yeah. That when when the shit's working and when it when it isn't. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? For sure. Uh but well, you know, proofs in the pudding, right? So the, it, it when we get the Snyder cut uh, or Zach's Justice League as they want to right. call it, which whatever. We know it's a Snyder cut. Uh these four installments, again, I think it's going to if these four installments kill it's going to we're going to get that universe we're yeah, going to yeah. get zach's vision in one way or another whether it be a streaming service or or, or, or motion picture yeah, we're going to uh, get it uh if not then 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 then, then the, the naysayers may have their moment and say yeah. hey man we told you that wasn't that good you know what yeah. i mean um i don't know my money's on zach it's always going to be on zach and, yeah. and you know bvs i liked bvs uh the the theatrical cut i did i liked it yeah i did too but sam uh my meatheads on movies co-host sam yeah. sam didn't hmm. he didn't like it at all he's a huge superman fan huge batman fan i i, I watched the extended cut and i'm like sam you've got to watch the extended cut and he's like why would i watch three and a half hours of a movie that i didn't like to begin with yeah. i'm like because it's a fucking different movie man you just gotta watch it just yeah, just man. i want your opinion if you just nothing else just give me your opinion he called me three and a half hours later and he goes donna justice is in my top five movies of all time now yep yep and i went are you kidding me he went no you're yep. exactly right this is a totally different movie Things are fleshed out that weren't. And we always say a movie needs to stand on its own. Like, I inferred a lot of stuff in BBS. I, I ended up being right about it, but I, I didn't have to be. And a lot of yeah. people are like, why was Luther? What was this? What was that? I get it. I assume this. You shouldn't do that in a movie. I always say that. They should stand on their own. Yeah. BBS extended cut took all that away. All yeah. that away. And that was all studio shit, right? They were all the like, it was the same battle that that we're facing now with the Snyder cut. It's it was just on a smaller level. Smaller level. They, yeah, they came in, they cut stuff out. They said, no, don't do this, don't do this, and it was big chunks of the story yeah. that we can't have a movie three hours and twenty minutes. No one's going to watch it. Right. That's bullshit. Yeah. yeah. You don't know your audience. They've been we doing do that, that since the Lord of the Rings. Right. Past twenty years. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, yeah. Um, who was the studio? Was that Paramount? For Lord of the Rings? Yes. New, New line. line Cinema. New Line Cinema. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, it, it, but you I, know, go ahead, Jeremy. So I'm sorry. Uh, I was just thinking like this, the success of the Snyder Cut, I think if it, if it works is going to just fundamentally change yeah. just because it's happening in this climate where you're right. Nobody's going to the movie theaters anymore, which sucks. Okay. I, I think people will miss out it. You know, there's the theater experience that you just can't get at home, but I, agree. Totally agree. I think that the fundamental change is going to be ultimately good for storytelling. Yeah. Because maybe we don't need to have this theatrical experience. Right. If we're getting a good story, the way that we want it to be, right. you, you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, in, in a way that we can all consume it and things like that. So I, yes. I, I'm looking forward to that. I'm hoping that that it that it works because yeah, I think I think the yeah. model that it creates 
is going to yes. be ultimately good for storytelling. I, Absolutely. I, and I agree. And I agree. And it's like, okay, so, okay, like, you can see it. You, you've already seen it. Everything's getting pushed back to 2022. Uh, Black Widow. Uh, yeah. uh, the, the Batman. You know, yeah. like, these big movies. Uh, I'm sure Guardians for Marvel is going to get pushed back. Suicide Squad, they say, is not going to be pushing back. But it it's going to be at the end of 2020, right? Oh, okay. Uh, so, in, and that's, you know, that's fine. Um, but, and again, there's an argument too of movies just coming out on streaming. Like, Mm -hmm. would you pay 25 bucks to own and stream on the day it releases Wonder Woman 1984? Right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I I would do that. I spent $24 at the movie theater anyway. Right. Exactly. 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 But, you know, I think movie studios, this is... This is all new territory. It's all new territory. And again, you know, to, to our point, Jeremy, you know, I think this is the perfect storm for something like Zach's, uh, you know, Snyder Cut, which is something that's been done. They're adding a few million dollars to get some reshoots, to get it finished up, to make it look nice and pretty. They're going to give us four installments. People are going to fucking lose their minds, hopefully, right? Fingers crossed. We oh, think people we already will. are. Yeah. <laughs> people already are. People yeah. already are. But if it's good, man, game changer. Yeah. Game changer. Yeah. We're going to get that. They're going to approach Ben Affleck and, and Zack Snyder and be like, hey, how about you do once we're going to do a four hour epic yeah. once a year on HBO max. Yeah. Could you be. know? Yeah. Well, shit, you know, we're going to give you this, you know, we're getting these subscribers. This, I mean, it's going to blow the fuck up if it works, it's got to yeah. work. Right. That's, yeah, that's yeah. a caveat to all this, yeah. yeah. but I think that dark universe, it comes back and I think it's, you know, and, and guess what? Hey, you're in you're in your you're in your best share in the house, man. Mm-hmm. You, know, you want some yeah. hot wings, you can get you some fucking hot wings. You want to make some queso <laughs> right. and some chips, you can do that, you know, and all in the comfort of your own home. Yeah. And this is the in new my sweatpants cinema. In sweatpants. <laughs> in sweatpants. <laughs> you know, you oh, don't have to man. wear pants. You ain't gonna wear no pants you don't want. You know, <laughs> and it's the new cinema. Now HBO Max is on the cutting edge of this new phenomenon of yeah. home cinema yeah you know what i mean like it's a new thing you know yeah. and it's all because of the snyder cut we'll see man i don't know yeah, well, and, and and honestly like i think we will be having a, a, an episode dedicated to uh the snyder cut we've talked a lot about it in this episode already but there's yeah. so much more so much more. uh so travis uh, here here i would say uh probably uh, here pretty soon, if not early next season for us on the Dingoes, uh, we'll have you back yes. uh, with with maybe maybe somebody else as well uh, to just talk just Snyder Cut Love and it. and the possibilities that it's opening up for yeah, the, the industry. But in the meantime, thank you guys so much for tuning in, Travis. Yep. Thank you so much for being here uh, yeah, one pleasure. last time, buddy. Tell everybody where they can find your work. Yes, uh, Blazing Defender Report, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch. And if you're a, uh Amazon Prime subscriber, you get one free Twitch subscription. I would appreciate if you use it on me. It costs you nothing. gives me just a little bit. It's fantastic. You would get exclusive content that only you as a Twitch subscriber can get to my show um it's i do a live show sometimes it's once a week i did one right before i came on the dingo tonight uh just to kind of warm up and i'm having a live show tomorrow my live chat is my love you are always my my second co-host on the blazing defender report get in the live chat give me your opinions you tell me what you think tell me what you're reading i would appreciate it um but yeah i'm on uh all all the social media sites and uh, Twitch is is my home. You can always get the uh, podcast version on iTunes and Anchor. But yeah, okay. uh, thank you Fantastic. guys. Like I was looking forward to this all day, and it did not disappoint at all. Uh, you guys are man; these dingoes are fat. Oh, I say you dingoes, us right. uh, dingoes. Yes, that's right, Sir that's Dingo right. Travis. That's right, <laughs> Dingo. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another. 
fun, fantabulous episode um, of the Dastardly Dingoes podcast. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Also, hit that bell so you get notified when we have a new episode. And as always, have fun, be safe, and listen to the Blazing Defender Report, ladies and gentlemen. See you next time, everybody. See ya. Bye. (laughs)